Ready when you are. Good. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, June 23rd, 2014. It is 7.15 and I do call this meeting to order. I'd like to remind everyone that we are being filmed tonight by ACMI, so um, please smile uh, <laughs> widely when you're on camera. Um, we're gonna start out with an uh, up. Mr. Chairman, if yes. I may. Uh, just on a personal note, on behalf of my mother, my brother Bobby, and all the Greeley clan, I wanna thank Arlington, my colleagues, uh, for the uh, wonderful support they showed with the tragic loss of my brother John, but thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so to start, we're gonna get, have an update from uh, Arlington Systems Analyst, Adam Kurowski, on Novus Agenda. And Novus Agenda is an online platform that we are uh, potentially moving to for our uh, Selectman's Agenda. Um, so this is a pretty exciting project for us at least and something we're, um, we're looking forward to. So please, Adam. Good evening. Thanks for having me here tonight. Uh, as you said, my name is Adam Kurowski. I'm the Systems Analyst and Director of GIS. Tonight is an exciting night for me <laughs> and I hope for you as well. We've hit a milestone in the process that we started last winter which began with the needs assessment of digital meeting management technology solutions. Uh, per your request, we began looking to find a new technology solution to create and publish agendas and minutes and create a searchable database. Uh, the system was supposed to also allow the Board of Selectmen to interact with materials from any computer with an internet connection. We're currently within a pilot period with the Novus Agenda solution, and I'm here to present that to you tonight. Uh, in front of you is an iPad. We, the iPads are already logged in to the system that we're piloting, and tonight you'll be able to follow along the agenda uh, as we move it forward, Marie and I, and you'll have access to the agenda items, any write-ups that we have about each agenda item, and any attachment or reference material that has been uh, associated with that agenda item. Some functionality is limited due to the fact that we're in a pilot period with the software, but hopefully tonight you'll get a feel for what the solution is like. And that's kind of uh, the idea of the pilot is for staff and the selectmen to uh, understand the system a little bit, get their hands on the system and see if it's a viable solution for us. Marie and I will be using a computer over here to record meeting notes, motions and votes and we'll also be advancing the agenda on your computer screens as we interact with our computer over here. Uh, we'll also be trying out a voting tool. We'll vo still vote the traditional way, but the iPad will prompt you at the appropriate time for your vote, yes, no, or abstain, and that again will be triggered by us over here. Uh, when your vote is in, it will be tallied on our system, and the results of the votes and the minutes as we put them in digitally uh, we'll begin to build the meeting uh, minutes so in a more efficient way. So tonight is just an in-meeting test and an information test assist, uh, session for the Novus Agenda system. It's not fully operational uh, and nor have we been formally trained yet. Uh, that will come if we choose to purchase the system. My hope is that you'll try out the system on the iPad tonight. Although it might be nerve-wracking and new technology, I haven't formally trained any of you I think the system is pretty easy to use and uh, you'll get a hang of it as the night goes on. So we expect to hit some bumps, but at this stage that's pretty expected. Uh, just remember you can't break the system. You can try, so push <laughs> buttons, be curious. And we're also conducting the meeting in a traditional way as well. So you've got your paper packets next to you. We're still gonna take traditional votes uh, and hopefully we can couple that with the digital votes. And Marie's still taking paper notes. Um, so this is just a, a, a counterpart mirroring what we already do, but doing it digitally. And I'd, also, I'd like to finish by saying that it's been great working with the women of the Selectman's office. Marie, Marianne, and Fran have been great. Uh, it's a new technology, it can be a scary venture, uh, but they jumped right on board and they've been learning in a very short time period. Uh, and I was excited to see the progress that they made. So if your iPad's not already on, is it already on? It is. Yes. Uh, the screen should be open to the agenda. 
All of the green headings on the left-hand side are agenda items that you can click on. Uh, when I trigger over here on my laptop to advance the agenda to the next item, you'll see it will highlight in yellow. And you can uh, feel free to use any of the buttons in any of the tabs that are there. And when a vote comes up, we may take a little break. Uh, maybe you guys can look over here and make sure we've got the, the vote popping up on your screen. Uh, and then we'll take it from there. Sounds good. I want to apologize for being late. I was brushing my teeth, water went everywhere, and I had to reattach the PVC pipe to the pipe to the faucet. My husband said I did it right, but I didn't, so my apologies. All you missed was uh, Adam pointed out, you cannot hit me with this iPad. Yes. <laughs> no. What I just say. Yeah. Right there. And then what do I do? I'm sorry. Right on that side. And there you go. Okay, thank you. Sorry, my apologies. Don't worry. Any questions? Right. Any questions from the board? Um, I, I, just, I do want to thank Adam for all his work on this. I know um, he's put quite a lot of effort into this, and it, and I, it means a lot to us. Um, I do also want to point out, as Adam did, um, the work of the women in the selectmen's office. Um, that when we first started um, kind of moving forward this, with this process, we kind of um, put this a lot on their shoulders. Um, they are the ones who will be using this primarily, so we, um, we truly appreciate their input and their um, input will go a long way. So if they're watching, we're very grateful for them. So um, I guess we'll see how this goes. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Moving on, for approval, consent agenda. Minutes of meetings, uh, May 12, 2014, and June 9, 2014. For approval, keynote to go at Anthony's East Side Deli. For approval, Betterment Order, Wright Street, for approval, Hackney Taxi Business Operator License Renewals, and 2014 year-end transfers. Is anyone here to speak on any of these items? Seeing none. Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to note that um, there is a revised copy of the meeting minutes um, on the desks um, this evening. Um, I had uh, spoken with um, the, the office about this. Um, it just reflects better on uh, our right street votes. We, we had a little bit of a complicated um, procedure that we under, underwent with uh, two votes, one on an amendment and one on the main motion as amended. And uh, so the language um, is changed there after consultation with uh, Ms. Kropelka to, to reflect um, what, what our ultimate action was. Thank you very much. <coughs> Any further discussion? Yes, <coughs> Mr. Dunn. Um, so I guess uh, we don't have a motion yet, right? No. Uh, uh, so I'd like to move approval, but I just want to be clear that the Hackney licenses uh, for Magan, uh, I just want to be clear, are not on the list that we are approving. Say that one more time. Sure. So in the Hackney license renewal report, there is, uh, so I, I move that we approve it, uh, everything on the consent agenda with the exception of the Magan licenses. So in, for, in further explanation of that, in uh, the Hackney Taxi License Renewal Report, we have a note from Marianne talking about how one, uh, Magan is using um, a certificate of deposit instead uh, to do self-insurance. And while I'm comfortable with self-insurance in general, the amount I'm not comfortable with because it's only $10,000. And so for that purpose, um, I'm, not, I, 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 I'm not ready to renew their license. Excellent. Understood. And I want to agree with Mr. Dunn. Um, one of the questions when we were looking at revising the Hackney rules was the insurance liability issue. Um, so Dan stated it appropriately. So I agree. Is that a second? Second. Great. We have a motion and a second. And will we have our first online vote? <coughs> no one knows. Oh. Thanks for bearing with us, everyone. So, Mr. Chairman, excuse me. Yes. I was here for May 12th, but I missed the June 9th. So I need to abstain. vote on one, but abstain from the other. How do I separate that on this? Sorry, Adam. Okay. Of course. May 12th, you were here. Huh? May 12th, you That's were what here. I just said. June 9th. I was not here. I was in Phoenix, Arizona. I'll, I'll make a note of that. Okay. Excellent. So, so I'm voting both for and abstain, just so you all know. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Um, we'll take a vo voice vote as well. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Thank you. Okay. Moving on, it is past 715, so this is a public hearing. First, we have a NSTAR petition. Um, Richard Shifone, Supervisor, Rights and Permits. Good evening, my name is Aletha Wade and I'm here with Rick Schifone on behalf of NSTAR Electric. Oh, thank you for being here. Good evening. Good evening. Please, can you explain uh, your project a little bit? I didn't know if you wanted a specific uh, explanation or just a, uh, an overall reasoning of what we're doing um, for the project. Overall sounds good. Yeah. Essentially, um, we keep a list of all our circuits that are underperforming and rank them. And as the circuits go to the bottom of the li uh, list, we schedule them from up for upgrade. Right now, the circuit that we have along Mass Ave is getting to the lower part of the list. So we have this upgrade project going on. We're going to break that circuit up and feed it from different directions to increase the reliability in the area of downtown. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Greeley. Move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Mahan. Um, just three questions, um, and it may be in here. I missed it. What's the approximate duration of the project? The initial phase will be the digging in the street, and we have a couple of months' worth of work for the digging in the street. And that will be done um, in each area at a time through the DPW process, the street opening permits and stuff. After that, we'll be coming in and pulling new cabling in those new manholes and conduits that we install. That'll be stretched out over another couple of months. We'd like to get this work done this year. We have in the schedule to be completely out of there this year. Um, since the close proximity to the high school and just doing the math, I, ideally you're done in October, but hopefully by December. Understood. Barring any unforeseen circumstances, have you made any, um, taken any steps or put any plans in place in terms of there's a school bus, not a school bus stop, but there's the MBTA bus stop there where all the kids get off, as well as walk in the crosswalk. In terms, what I'm thinking is, I can't see the project yet. Um, do you need anything beyond what's contained in the additional conditions to allow the safe passage of the high school students and anyone else? No, we don't need anything else. We're, we're all set. We'll schedule it through the DPW, and we'll definitely try to get out of the way of the schools uh, during the summertime. Uh, well, September. Um, you, you'll be okay. I was just doing the math in my head. And then I just had one question on number five and number six. Um, five speaks about possible on-site utility infrastructure. Um, do you know or anticipate what that's going to be, or is it just going to be something may arise as you're digging? And uh, Could you repeat that, please? Were you Under number five, where it cites there may be on-site utility infrastructure that's not shown on the engineering sketch. Um, do you know beforehand what you're anticipating or is it you're just putting that in as a caveat that if you hit something that you didn't know was there, you're gonna fix it? Exactly, what, what, what that's all about is when we go into the manholes, we'll pull out some of the old cable. Well, sometimes it gets stuck, it might be welded to the side that we actually have to dig in the street to free it up. So that's just um, that we may have to do some maintenance as part of this project. Okay. And we, th that's like an unknown. I used to work for Verizon and I loaded all the trunks and, and the linemen. And then the last thing on number six, um, on all the other additional conditions, um, you were uh, very efficient in terms of talking about coordinating with the tree warden, coordinating with the town engineer, and I just wanted to, and I'm sure it's inherent in there, um, but number six, when you talk about work around the town-owned electric lines and or fire alarm lines. Um, if for some reason you encounter some sort of difficulty with that, I, I'm going to assume that you either already have or will be coordinating through the town manager with the fire chief. Like, what, what does that happen if for some reason there's some repair damage to a fire alarm line or the, the other lines there? What's the process you're gonna follow besides repair it? Well, we normally contact, if we have a dig up of fire alarm or Verizon, contact them directly, get them out there, and then work with them to repair it. Okay, I just wanted to, well, you were so good about all the other places. Saying, Understood. If this comes up, we'll contact so-and-so. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Five nothing vote. Thank you very much. There's, there's a butters here. There's a butters here. I think I need fingernails or something for this. I can't seem to. M Mr. Chairman, I, I yes. think there may be some butters here from from the oh, Instar oh. petition. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, wait Can a minute. You? Wait. Hold. Oh. Wait a minute. Yeah. Thank you. Unfortunately, we do have not unfortunately, but. You almost left early. You're going to stick around for one second, if that's okay. Sure. I believe. Is there anyone in the crowd looking to speak to this? I have some questions. You, please come on forward. Hi, I live on Schuler Court, okay. um, where some of this work is being done. So I had a couple of questions about where the lines are being moved from, if they're being moved underground. Uh, so my property faces the high school and backs onto the supermarket. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know about the lines. Are all the lines going underground? The ones that there are some that are running along the back of the property that in between the high school, my property and the supermarket. Are those going underground? Not at this time. Uh, is no, there any way that they could? While you're there? That would be a whole different project as far as that part of the distribution. This is to bring the main primary into the area. And then you've got a distribution in the back of That would be a whole different project. So what is going underground then? The, well, we're upgrading the existing underground. There's in there the primary that's coming down Mass Ave. In reliability, and we're giving ourselves ways that if we do have a fault, that we can feed it from a different circuit, uh, switches. So, I see. So nothing's changing on Schuler Court necessarily, unless you need to go down there as an alley. Correct. Okay. We, we're, we're, we will be digging on Schuler Court. You know, we'll be putting a, call it a duct bank in Schuler Court. And where, will, where will that be going? If possible, if you could address the microphone Sorry. when you're speaking. Yeah. Yes. Where will that be going? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, Rick Schifoni from NSTAR Electric. We're proposing a duct bank from Mass Ave traveling about 250 feet down to one of our existing manholes in Shula Court to bring additional lines down Shula Court for reliability. Okay. And is that on the road or on the... Um, of course, I'm concerned with my sidewalk. Uh, no, no, it's, uh, it's <laughs> all in the center of the road. Okay, fantastic, great. So the aesthetics will be maintained. Well, yeah, yes. yes. <laughs> what number is Fourteen. Fourteen. Mr. Chairman, could I yes. just, and I didn't mean to cut you off, but where you said school of court, it kind of triggered something in my mind. We have a further agenda item regarding repaving of Mass Ave from school of court to Peg Spangler Way. Am I correct to assume that you're, A, aware of that, and B, I, I don't want to envision that we stripe or restripe, and then you have to do the necessary work to dig it up. Are you aware of that project? Understood. We, we, had, uh, we had worked with Wayne way back in April when we were first looking at digging up a lot of Mass Ave, and then we re-engineered to dig up a lot less of Mass Ave. But Wayne is aware of the work that we want to go out, and the one at Shula Court's actually only going about three or four feet into Mass Ave to our first manhole. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any further questions? That's it. Thank Great. you. Great. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Thanks, Mr. Chaplain. <coughs> Moving on, Verizon petition, Massachusetts Avenue, Everett Bryan. This was uh, tabled from our last meeting, so thank you for being here, Mr. Bryan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, my name is Everett Bryan. I'm a right-of-way engineer with uh, Engineering and Data Solutions, representing Verizon New England at 20 Shattuck Road in Andover. Our petition this evening is to place approximately 128 feet of underground conduit between two existing manholes located on Massachusetts Avenue. And it's shown on a plan that's attached to the petition from manhole number 134 to manhole number 282. And we're proposing to go out into the gutter line here because that's a brick sidewalk mm -hmm. rather than disturb the brick sidewalk. And also one of the items that uh, the D Department of Public Works presented to us concerned the MWRA. He said they informed us that there was an MWRA water main in that area or in the vicinity. And I'm in contact with MWRA and their engineering office over in Chelsea, and they're reviewing it. It may require a permit from them before we commence work. They haven't decided as yet. If, if so, we'll com complete that permit application before we commence with the work. Excellent. And numerous other items that are listed from the DPW memorandum, and we'll comply with all of those, have a 
um, pre-construction sidewalk and coordinate with the tree warden and so forth. What are all those items that are listed? Thank you very much. Mr. Dunn. Uh, so one of the complaints that uh, I, we get a lot about is double poles. And Verizon, of course, is the owner of record of almost every pole here in Arlington. And so last year we created a utility pole working group that's been trying to make, that's been making progress on working with the various utilities and other holders, including the town, that have uh, double poles. And I'm assuming you're fairly familiar with the double pole process and there's a, uh, the database and you know whose ball and court it is. Are you familiar with how that works? Yes. I uh, I helped invent it. <laughs> All right. So then you will understand the problem that we're having. Uh, stuff that's in the database is proceeding at a reasonable pace. The problem we're having is getting poles into the database. So we have a couple volunteers in town who will go around and find the double poles, and then they pass them along to the Verizon office, and then we get another printout of the list, and those poles aren't there. What can you do for us? In other words, those that are reported to your office forwarded to Verizon are not getting on our double poll. Like we are passing the information. We're saying here's the poll, here's the location, here's the number, and then we get an update, and then we get a list of what our current polls are in Arlington, and those polls that we're reporting are not consistently making it into the database. Could I ask who you're sending that list to? Uh, I forgot to bring that note with me. We have a volunteer uh, on our utility poll working group who is a former Verizon employee. And uh, is it Stan that we send it to? Or uh, I'd have to double check who it is. I apologize, I forgot to double check who it is. Stan who that is. is our public affairs mm -hmm. manager. So I will ask him about it and inform him of that, that problem you're having. Yeah. We'll get him the database updated and we'll see if we can't get something done about it. You, uh, my name and I'll give you my card and so forth. Yeah. So Thank you. May I, I can yeah, so uh, it's worth noting that as one of the things we did as a board is we said um, we, that we, could, we would hold, if we weren't making good enough progress in the double polls, that we would hold up votes like the one we're doing right now. And so, but this is, uh, it's your lucky day. This is the first time that Verizon has tried to come to see us since, uh, we, we, you know, we passed that policy. So uh, I'll definitely hold on to the, and actually I'll give it to Marie and then we'll, we'll work um, from there. I'd be happy to assist you with that, whatever I can do. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Bonner. Um, so similar question as previous. Um, if su successful, when will you commence in duration of the project? I expect the project will last several days, okay. possibly a week. I don't think it will last longer than a week. Uh, there may be some restoration and need to be done later than that. Uh, and. When we're going to commence will largely depend on uh, the outcome of the permitting process of the MWRA and coordinating the on-site walk and so forth that I mentioned earlier. So uh, I, don't, I can't give you a date. It'll be this summer, I expect, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know, possibly as much as a month out depending on how, how uh, involved we get with MWRA. Okay. And just to bring to your attention, but it's not like the previous a application, it's a much shorter duration um, and it's a completely different project and you are working with the town engineer we are embarking on the mass Ave corridor redesign we're not even close to the end point okay. um, but in working with the town engineer you may want to make sure if there's any mass Ave mass dot work that might impede uh, you might want to check the schedule of whatever work they're doing right now they're mostly doing surveying and and right. marking off lines and things like that but i just wanted to which you're probably already aware and where you're in contact with wayne chenard the town engineer right. he'd be the person to make sure they know um j just fyi to you yes we'll, we'll definitely coordinate with the city engineer's office so uh, um, That's it, whatever he requires we'll, we'll comply with thank you mr Greeley. so i understand about the mwra thank you for being here L let's just say by next friday they're done do you have a best best guess when you might try and start it and that you have clearance through them or that's all been I would think within a pardon me go ahead no go ahead sir yeah. uh, I would think probably within a week following we get all the permissions and the permits in place and can schedule the on-site walks with the various parties that need to attend that uh, so uh, I don't think that take longer than a week maybe a little longer and I, I can certainly see where you don't have a lot of control over that, but you're trying. So thank you. Move approval subject to all conditions second. and set forth. We have a motion seconded. Are there any comments from anyone in the audience? 
Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very Thank much. You. Adam, is a vote thing coming up? Excuse me, Mr. Chair. I seconded. No, it was I think Mr. Mr. Greeley. Greeley and then Ms. Mahan with the second. But should we have voted on this is what I'm asking, Adam? Should we have voted on this? I, I didn't. Uh, oh, there it is now. I just did. Come on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on. Appointments. Appointment for Vision 2020, Community and Citizen Servants. Task Force, Task Group, and Standing Committee Co-Chair, Julie Brazil. Hello, Julie. Hi. Hello, Hi. thank you for being here. Sure. Does anyone have questions? <laughs> <laughs> you weren't busy enough with recycling and everything, Julie? No, that's... no, I definitely needed more on my plate, so. <laughs> <laughs> Move approval. Second. Yes. I uh, just want for the purposes of um, being totally clear Julie's worked on a, my campaigns and I thank her very much for that support it's very easy for me to say that she's gonna be great at this but just so the rest of the board knows of that connection thank you Mr. I think in fairness I better make the same disclosure <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Julie's worked on an awful lot of things yeah. in town yeah, as well, so, so yeah. Uh, yeah. that's not surprising I just have something since I have you here before us sure. in your vision 2020 co-chair hat um, some Semblance of this may already exist, but one of the things that the master plan has really um, taken root with, as well as my other hat um, on the school side, is when doing surveys or going out and seeking opinions about town or issues, um, really utilizing the, the high school youth groups and possibly Arlington Catholic High School. Uh, does that? Do you know? Does that already, already exist? And if not, if you could kind of keep that um, in the front burner to see as a pot because sure. they have said at the high school besides the student government day that we have here mm -hmm. um, you know the groups that are formed and perhaps some kids that aren't in those form groups have said you know how do we get involved how do we let the town of Arlington know we need something in Arlington here's our ideas okay uh, I don't know okay. um, the vision 2020 survey which goes out with the census every January um, is you know is in is a paper Form mail to every household. Past that, I think it's individual groups, and I haven't been able to dive into the inner workings of um, all of the working groups just yet. Mm -hmm. But I do know that there is a on our agenda for the summer to talk about in much more detail is involving the high school. Great, that's been coming up a lot. Um, yes, they've been there've been the diversity conversations have made it very clear that reaching out to um, that population um, would be great for everyone. So, yeah. I don't have any disclosures, just the question. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, no, thank you, Julia. I think that this is a um, Vision 2020 has come to be incredibly important, Arlington, and mm -hmm. um, we're very lucky to have you spearheading it. So, well, I'm very excited. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Julia. So, we had a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. I have nothing. And thank you all very right. much. I'm sure Enjoy. you will all be hearing from me. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, license and permits. We have a request for a common victual license um, for Arlington Art Lounge, formerly the Savory Plate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Am I, am I in the shot? I, I can move. Not so much right yet. Not I'll go. Uh, I'll go sit over there while you present. I was just asking Steve if I'm supposed to be writing comments down on this process. I've taken a couple notes okay. yeah, myself, I just so I think. Let so. you know because yeah. I was late and I apologize because yeah. well. I have just a couple of suggestions. Well, she's setting up. Will there be a paint by the number opportunity at this yeah. place as well for those of us colorblind? For that, She'll speak say to say that. Again? Yeah, a paint by the numbers. 
opportunity. Of course, yes. Okay, thank you. I, I talked to you this winter on the phone, right? Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we should probably start by saying thank you for folks that have already given us some time on this project. We appreciate it. Good evening, my name is Helen Galanopoulos, um, here on behalf of the Arlington ARP uh, Lounge, LLC. Um, my partner's behind me. Hi, I'm Sheila Carmen. Hi, I'm Kim Brad, Kim Khadijan Bradshaw. I actually grew up in Arlington, wrote for the Arlington Advocate, and I'm still spending a lot of time in Arlington, hopefully a lot more. <laughs> um, so in front of you, you have some packets uh, of the slideshow that we brought with us, however, um, it's not up. Our mission statement is to basically provide a new option to the town of Arlington, which uh, would provide a fun, creative um, night out that would um, give some entertainment options uh, that are not available presently. Obviously, not just the town of Arlington, but also surrounding communities. And uh, a big piece of that is we'd like to see the uh, bond between the creative community of Arlington um, and, I'm sorry, between the arts and the community make that bond uh, stronger. And uh, the third part of our mission statement that we feel very strongly about is to incorporate some sort of giving back to uh, parts of the community like the senior, um, the, uh, I think it's Sunrise um, Center or the uh, Arlington Boys and Girl Girls Club have some monthly event whereby we donate a portion of our proceeds or give some sort of discount to, to bring those folks um, uh, into our space. Um, so, so if anyone knows about the concept? Very good question, Kim. Has anyone heard about this uh, paint night sort of events that um, no. it's, yep. you have? Yeah, you my wife is an artist, yeah. Oh, oh excellent. Okay. okay, we may want to talk to yeah, her. We may need <laughs> <laughs> Should you? <laughs> um, Sheila will, will describe the concept. So the concept is uh, basically an instructor guided step-by-step -step painting lesson of a feature painting. So each night there's a different painting that's, that's focus um, of the lesson. Uh, all participants at the um, event are supplied with canvas, paint, brushes, a creative atmosphere, and music. And food and drinks are available to purchase throughout the evening. Each lesson slash evening lasts about two and a half to three hours. And reservations are made in advance online and are prepaid. Um, background of this type of event um, is that it, it started I don't know, maybe about 10 years ago in various southern states and western states. Um, it started here in Boston around 2010 when the paint bar opened for business in Newton. <coughs> They've been very successful and since they opened, uh, these places are popping up everywhere. Uh, paint bar just opened their second location on Newberry Street late last year. Um, we have a page that includes a variety of press uh, that have uh, focused on various articles covering the idea. Um, competing locations, so the paint bar, they have two spots. There's a place in Natick. They're opening a special, uh, second location in Waltham. There's a place in Maynard, South Boston, Beverly, Worcester, Springfield, Lexington, Mashpee. I mean, I can, we could go on and on. Um, Lexington just opened late last, early this year. And I'm going to turn it over to Kim for her paint night. Uh, oh, so. So the next slide, if the next page just talks about the same uh, concept Sheila was talking about. These are just, they're all over the place. There's a lot of locations in Arlington already that are doing sort of tra these pr traveling concepts. So we want to have a more permanent establishment where we can create the experience. <coughs> and going back to our mission statement about strengthening the bond between the arts and the Arlington community, uh, our vision is um, on the next page, sort of the next two pages, uh, our concept and sort of what differentiates us from other locations. So our vision is to start off as traditional paint nights, probably five or six nights a week, um, slowly branching into some weekend classes, kids classes, hopefully simultaneous classes, adults in one room, kids in the other. Uh, and then we're hoping to also start to bring in some other arts like poetry night. Uh, we have um, someone who wants to do cake decorating classes, mummy and me classes. So. 
you know, we're looking to entertain sort of the young and old, um, again, maybe partnering up with some local establishments in the area, partnering up with a lot of the senior citizens, the boys clubs, boys and girls clubs. Um, we're also thinking about doing a gallery evening and showcasing local artists' artwork. So I think we have some really great, exciting visions. Um, I think the next page talks just again about that, you know, sort of um, school vacation classes and uh, char charity events and, and so on and so forth. So we're really excited. <laughs> Toward the end of the packet, you'll just see a sample menu. Uh, part of the beauty of the concept is while folks are engaged in this activity, we would be offering uh, food and drink uh, to enhance that activity. It's not the primary goal of the, of the uh, business, but it, we find that it really does give it um, a, a great aspect and, and people walk out feeling like they've had a great evening. Um, in addition, they'll walk out with a painting, which is really, really great. Um, and again, the painting is for folks who are artistic, who have never touched a paintbrush uh, like myself and walked out with what I thought was fantastic. Um, <laughs> and they keep coming back and back. And um, if you ever do engage in a conversation with, with people who have tried it, they seem to love it. So this is our sample menu. And again, you'll see there's um, something for everyone. Um, and then our hours of operation, mostly it would be the evening classes to begin with. And then we'd like to uh, offer some afternoon classes on the weekends. Um, and then finally, toward the end, you do see some photographs from various um, neighborhood um, uh, studios. And you'll see how people are smiling and they're packed in um, and, and following along with their paintings. So if you guys have any questions, we're happy to answer them. We know it's very new for the town. So we're here to really um, just take your guidance and see what you'd like us to do to, um, to, to come into the town. Thank you. Um, questions from the board? Ms. Mahan. Um, one just sort of custodial question and then one big, big question. Um, thank you. You also submitted a maintenance plan, um, which restaurants and businesses of this type do. <clears throat> Excuse me, since you, this is a new business for you, um, usually what's on there also, I just want to make sure you're aware, <coughs> excuse me, in terms of your waste removal, trash, that whatever company you have, they're aware of the town bylaw in terms of when they can, you know, come. As so Kim, already, I, 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 sorry. Sorry, I was eager. So we already uh, have a conversation with Allied, who we, does Horizons Hair Care, who actually did Savory Plate. So we have all these folks ready, if you are, to grant us our license. We have, you know, we've going through our checklist for sure. And a lot of times when I ask these questions, it's really just to kind of get it on the record. Sure. I know no, you've already. No and then the other more broad <clears throat> sort of query I'd like to give you all, not that you need to have an answer or, or an, any commitment tonight. First of all, I think this is fantastic. I missed out on one of my girls' nights, East Arlington girls' nights, where they, I think they went to Cambridge. Um, and it was a great time. It was all over Facebook. And I saw where you listed all the different groups um, in terms of youth groups and seniors and um, nights out and things like that. What I'd just like to sort of put before you, and you may already have that sort of in the back of your mind, this would be a fantastic sort of event. And the way I'm looking at it is that when you offer a night, it's really just to that group. There may be an open night where first come, first serve, but there may be a senior citizen night. Um, just something that is really kind of close to my heart is um, a lot of special education kids, especially autism kids, um, I know when um, the out of district placements, when they try to offer extra things to them, first of all, it's a very limited um, selection that you can give in terms of what these kids can do, as well as it's hard to find the staff and to find a place that will just have. It's very difficult for lower functioning autistic children and young adults that if, you know, it's a mixed group, if it's all a bunch of other kids like them. So what I would like to say, and I know for autism, um, painting is a really, really great therapy. And I know if you worked um, with the special ed director at the high school, but I'm thinking more, not so much the, the kids who are in the district will probably find their way through, they play a sport, they're in band. I'm thinking of like the kids at lab out of district, because I know there's so few limited opportunities for this, and I can tell you that the few times this has been offered, it's mostly you know autistic teenagers and young adults, the spaces get scooped up like crazy and so many other kids. And it's so sporadic. 
you know, if it happens once a year, maybe twice. So I just wanted to put, I'm not saying you have to do that. And it is. Uh, I have two special educators in my family, so this is uh, near and dear to our heart. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for choosing Arlington. I think it's a totally, it's a great idea, and I agree it's a different kind of business than we've got here before, and I think that that variety is excellent, and so I'm, I'm really glad to, to see you give it a try. Uh, just, I had one question, which was, so I saw the sample menu that you talked about uh, doing wine, but in, uh, but the application doesn't talk about, it, it's just uh, food, it's not beer and wine yet. I was, what's your, what's your plan in that area? We're, it's in the works, okay. basically, is the answer. Um, we want to be, make sure that we're complying with all the regulations, and there are many, and mm -hmm. we're happy to do that, so we want to take our time, make sure we do it correctly. Um, but we are going to, you know, should we get the license today, proceed with, with the beer and wine request, uh, request for license. Um, and um, So you're just doing it in a couple steps, is what you're exactly. saying? Okay. So I think our right. plan is, if, should you right. grant us our, our license to come back on July 28th? Oh, okay. Yeah, we have it on the calendar. Uh, in pencil, but. <laughs> uh, I move approval subject to conditions. Great. Uh, Mr. Greeley. Yeah. Mr. Joe Nick. I don't know. No, uh, second it. I'll second it. Uh, uh, spectacular idea. Will you have a night for the remedial completely <laughs> the Yes. Yes. Yeah. But you're going to have a poetry night. Will you have an open mic night for singers uh, some That's night as well? Yeah. Yeah. So again, we will uh, continue. Uh, and, and storytelling, so uh, you can come. For uh, that I think too. That's wonderful. We poet laureate, we, we've approved recently. But uh, so, and it's thirty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. That just covers the paint and all of the. Right. Uh, uh, and then the menu would be separate, a separate bill for the food and. Right. And, the, and, and it is beer and wine you're looking for, not in all alcohol. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much for choosing Arlington. This is very Thank exciting. Thank you. We're very excited. Oh. Mr. Kira. I'd also like to say, you know, if, if you have put the same heart and soul into the business as you have into this presentation, it's really you put a lot into the oh, presentation, you. I, I think you'd be very successful. Right, you know. <laughs> and, and I'm sure you've done your research and you know that you're really hitting a sweet spot here in, in Arlington. And, um, you know, I, like my colleagues, I think very excited that you're creating a place for community up in the Heights. And, 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 um, in that district, um, what, what's your timetable for? Are your I, I know there are a lot, a lot of steps to go through at this point, but what do you hope? Mid-August soft opening, family and friends, which will all be invited to party in September, and then full force uh, schedule for September. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Well, keep us posted. I, I look forward to supporting it. Thank you very much. No, this is um, this is very cool. I know. I have some paintings from other art bars that my girlfriend has gone to hanging up around the house. So I'm sure we'll be getting a few more come September. Nice. Um, but uh, we have a motion in a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Moving on, request food vendor license. Rosalyn Garcia doing business as the Fashion Cake Boutique to Lake Street. Hello. Hi. Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Juan Rodriguez. Uh, this is my wife, Rosalyn Garcia. <laughs> and uh, we're here uh, to request permission for a new food vendor license. Uh, in a small cake shop uh, we want to put up here in Arlington. It's on number two Lake Street, uh, <clears throat> primarily focusing on special order cakes and uh, uh, custom cakes and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so. <coughs> cool. um, questions from the yep. board? Yes, Ms. Mahan. Um, similar to the people who were here previous before you, um, for your maintenance plan, I wanted to, A, again, just say about the waste removal 
that whatever company you use, it may be what other surrounding businesses, that they're aware of the town bylaw, that they don't come in too early to um, remove any trash or rubbish. Um, the second thing is um, in terms of the snow removal obligations that you have down there, I know, and you're brand new there, um, in front of your business, you're responsible within a pretty reasonable time to make sure that um, the sidewalk in front of that is um, shoveled. And I only say that because of that particular stretch, you know, having yeah. got, gotten calls from neighbors and people who want to come into businesses, yeah, it's been a little that. trouble spot. So you're not responsible for the whole thing, but I just wanted to make you aware. And if for some reason where you're sort of kitty corner, Mass Ave, Lake Street, if a condition arises where um, somehow the snow's packed and it's just, because it is a corner, you can always work, you know, contact the town manager or the selectman's office and we can sort of remedy that. I'm not saying that will happen. Usually that's in a super duper, you know, we've had snow for eight months between December and February. So I just wanted to, on the, on the maintenance plan, and then the only other question I had, I didn't see it in here, um, because we had this at a previous selectman's meeting with a bakery up um, across from Stop and Shop. Uh, is Ros Rosalie? Yes. Is Rosalie or anyone else um, on your staff sort of safe serve certified? Have you? Yeah, yeah. You, so I'm you have. Take the exam tomorrow, so. You are okay. I just didn't see it in here, and that's to your benefit. But I also know it's it's in concert with what other uh, similar businesses of this have done. So you you will you are taking you yes. and I'm telling you you'll pass on your yeah. first attempt. And, <laughs> and sure. okay, thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Greeley. Uh, yeah. Again, thank you very much for choosing Arlington. Best of luck okay. to you. Any samples here tonight? Oh. <laughs> she has to take her safe serve course. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We're not approved yet, so. <laughs> <It's done. laughs> All right. uh, uh, mobile approval subject to conditions are set forth. Have you already done that? No. no. Second. Thank you. Good luck. Any further discussion? Um, so we have a uh, motion, a second. I, d I do just want to say that we have, um, you know, two vacant storefronts that are being filled today, and they're really in, you know, great areas of town, which I think will really help you know, both the Heights and East Arlington um, come together as a whole and really draw some more people down. So we're very grateful to, um, to you for choosing Arlington. Um, that being said, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank good, you. Luck. Okay, good, good luck. Thank you. Good evening. <coughs> Moving on, citizens open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Is anyone here for citizens open forum? Seeing none, moving on. Traffic rules and orders, other business. Presentation, Mass Ave striping plan, Shula Court to Peg Springler Way, Mr. Ademacher. Thank you, uh, members of the board. Uh, if you recall last year, I forget when, it was, must have been in the summer sometime, uh, Public Works and Engineering Department put together a striping plan from Mass Ave, uh, from Lexington Town Line to Chula Court. And the intent was to, uh, one, refresh the striping, but also to make accommodations for uh, cycling uh, where appropriate. At the time, we stopped at Chula Court because this, the section of road from Chula Court to uh, about Peg's Pillar Way is, um, it was a little bit more challenging. It was varying widths of roadway, and we have a significant increase of uh, traffic between uh, Mill and Jason and uh, Pleasant Street. So at the time we stopped at Chula Court and I think at that time I mentioned that we were going to be looking to get some consultant help to analyze that last stretch of roadway and the plan you have before you is a result of the work from that consultant. Essentially um, traffic uh, counts were taken and uh, improvements to the uh, Mill Jason and Mass uh, intersection were considered. And the result, like I said, the result is the plan you have there. Essentially, it continues from Shula Court to um, Newman Way. There would be 
enough room to have uh, one lane of traffic in each direction, which is what the traffic uh, volumes uh, indicated were required. But there is an ample amount of room on that stretch of road. Uh, I, let me back up a little bit. Currently, it's somewhat used as two lanes uh, in the westbound direction and one lane in the eastbound. Uh, in the eastbound, I, do I have that reversed? Um, I think I believe it's two lanes in westbound. Yes, two lanes in westbound uh, de facto, and one in the eastbound. But essentially, those two lanes in the westbound merge to one in, around Stop and Shop or uh, Lock, Lockland Avenue, and it's, it's a difficult merge there because of side streets and whatnot. So uh, the plan here extends the two lanes from uh, um, from Shula Court to Newman Way, where the merge uh, to, f to, f to two lanes in each direction would occur at that point. It then has four lanes approaching uh, Mill Street, you know, heading in the east direction. And then there's two lanes, again, eastbound all the way to um, the library, Peg Spangler Way. So that's in the eastbound direction. In the westbound direction, coming from Peg Spangler Way, there'd be two lanes past uh, the town hall to Mill and uh, Jason. That two lanes would extend through the intersection where it would then merge to the one lane, which would then take you to Lachlan. Uh, again, this, this lane layout is a, a result of traffic studies and traffic volumes that were uh, considered. There was <coughs> some consideration given to reducing the amount of lanes uh, in front of Town Hall. Uh, it was studied, but essentially we only have about a 1,200 foot section of roadway between Pleasant Street and the uh, Mill and, <coughs> and Mill and Jason section, uh, the Mill and Jason intersection. And you need room for queuing in both of those intersections. You need about 400 feet queuing towards the uh, Mill and Jason intersection, and you need a, a greater amount than that, maybe 600 feet on some occasions or greater in the Pleasant Street. So by the time you take into those, those needs for queuing lengths, you left a very little <laughs> lane or um, roadway segment left to consider a, a reduced cross section of road. So uh, it was decided to keep the, the four lanes through there because of that capacity. Uh, so what we're, what we're uh, requesting here is the adoption of this layout and uh, incorporation of the traffic rules in order. Mr. Carroll. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rademacher, for sure. all of this. Um, um, certainly looks to be uh, well thought out. I'm wondering, I, I do see two uh, areas where there are proposed curb extensions, uh, one right in front of this building <coughs> on both sides of the street yes. and uh, one by the library on both sides of the street, right. which are both obviously have been really problematic and we've had some um, unfortunate yes. accidents uh, in both locations. Is that proposed to be part of this work that we're approving tonight? The uh, bump out at Library Way or Peg Spling Way is already under design and we have funding to do that yeah. uh, this construction season. The, uh, the bump out in front of Town Hall was a recommendation by the consultant and that is not something that has been designed or is proposed just yet but can be added yeah. uh, when funding um, becomes available. And my other question is, um, I know that we did just last year, we approved the, the striping further west. A lot of that uh, on Mass Ave, a lot of that seems to have sure. worn away already. Um, we, do, um, we do have a contract that we're preparing that will uh, completely restripe Mass Ave and some other of our, our major roadways uh, with a, uh, a, an epoxy paint, which will last longer. The state made some funds available after the, the last winter yeah. we had, which was pretty difficult on roadways and, and striping. So they made some money available to communities. We're going to use that money to uh, restripe um, Mass Ave and, like I said, a few other uh, busier roads with a, an epoxy type paint. So will that all be done in conjunction with this work yeah. as well? Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Ms. Mahan. I want to say I'm using my tablet, Adam Karofsky, instead of uh, picking. And it, I really like the feature for the question I'm going to ask Mr. Rademacher that I can do the squeezy thing to um, zoom in on it. Um, you also um, cited that along with this work, um, there would be some striping line designation painting for Mill and Jason. And I do see when I look at on this, you have Mill Street going up to Mass Ave. Um, one designation of left lane must turn left. Here's the question that I'm asking is uh, about a year and a half, two years ago, um, Ann and Jack Bowler and some of the neighbors from Bacon Street in that area had said, which this partially um, answers that, 
Um, is there any way, because of the way traffic backs up, even with Hollaback and Coughlin not being there, and there's not that many parked cars, but there are at certain times, that for the two lanes there'll be um, a designated straight, take a left on Mass Ave, um, or, I mean, I mean a designated left on Mass Ave, and then are you also going to stripe the right-hand lane so they know they can go straight and or right? And then the other um, converse to that, I apologize, yeah, right. is the same suggestion was made to the other side of Mill Street, and I don't see that on here. I believe that is part of the um, recommendation. That, it's almost a slightly uh, separate project. That's still but right. under control, under review, that the design of that intersection, <laughs> they're going <laughs> to finalize the plan so that can be bid out separately because we're looking at some uh, new traffic uh, signals and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I believe the intention there is if you're on Mill Street, the left turn, the left hand lane will be a, a, um, a left turn only mm -hmm. and the right will be through and right. And if you're coming down from Jason, basically just the opposite. But there will be signage denoting that. I know there's some confusion. That's fine. Now. No, I only raised it because yeah. it's in your memo yes. and then it's on here, right? Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that was still on the Correct. table yep. with the understanding that if, if the um, engineers or the consultants come back with some other um, painting designation, but I definitely think the dedicated left on both sides yes. is a good thing and will help that traffic that really cues up just at certain times. Thank yes. you very much. Sure, thank you. For the, yes, Mr. Dunn. Uh, so I, I, I think I'd follow the same questions, and so I think it, the changes on Mill Street make a lot of sense to me, so I, I totally agree. Uh, at uh, Peg Spengler Way, with the bump out there, yeah. uh, how is that going to work for like the right-hand turn into the library? Is that still going to be? That, we're, that radius is being designed to not to impact that. Okay. That, that turn can still be made. What you're looking at there is probably not, is not a design, it's more of a concept that okay, put good. a bump out there, but we're putting, we're putting together a more a comprehensive design for that. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. For other discussion from the board. Mr. Greeley. Um, so, uh, what do you need from us, Michael? Uh, just uh, the approval of yes, this plan? Correct. So, move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is anyone in the audience here to talk about this? Yes. I am Mark Kepline from Palmer Street. Um, in looking at the design, I noticed that there are four travel lanes s headed eastward beginning at about Whole Foods at Bartlett Street. And there's a church across the street. Uh, so that's a busy crosswalk. And there's two additional unsignalized crosswalks in the four lane area. Um, and this is in a neighborhood where the residents of Precinct 8 were the ones who most strongly did not want four lanes on Mass Avenue. And here you are proposing a four lane design without bike lanes. Um, I, so are you reaching some sort of epiphany where you've realized that four lanes are better served the public? Um, in East Arlington, there's traffic volumes of six years ago of 22,000 vehicles per, hour, per day and up to about 1,700 during peak hours. So that's fairly heavy traffic too. And yet the advocacy here was for three travel lanes to make pedestrians safer and more comfortable crossing the street and making bicyclists safer and more comfortable traveling on Mass Ave. I mean, especially from the, high, from the high school to the library, bike lanes abruptly stop at Whole Foods, and there's no bike lanes for the rest of the way to the library. So it's, it's I don't know, it, it seems inconsistent to make East Arlington residents suffer with three travel lanes, and yet propose four travel lanes in the neighborhood from people who most wanted three travel lanes. Uh, so, I'm wondering if, if any, if you've reached out to bicyclists and pedestrian groups to, to listen to their concerns about crossing the street and traveling safely. Thank you. Mr. Rademar, could you? Uh, I can answer <clears throat> some of those uh, questions. Again, the, the number of lanes isn't necessarily being driven by traffic volumes, but by the, um, the lack of capacity or the capacity limits at the intersections that uh, sandwich both ends of that stretch of road. 
the queuing length at the Pleasant Street Mass Ave intersection and the queuing length at the Jason Mill Street intersection uh, what require the two, lean, two lanes uh, in each direction for storage, similar to what we did do in Mass Ave uh, because of uh, queuing lengths at Route 16 and a few of those other intersections that caused that project to evolve into a two lane section towards Cambridge. That's uh, one of the reasons why we have the two lanes here. Uh, as far as uh, cycling um, accommodations, this plan was presented to uh, ABAC for review. We did get some comment back and forth, and we, um, there was a small evolution of the plan, and TAC uh, reviewed the plans as well. Thank you. Um, I believe it was Seth Scottsmith who had mm -hmm. his hand up. Scott Smith on uh, TAC and ABAC. I just wanted to reiterate what Mike said. Yes, we, re we reviewed the plan. is obviously very much a compromise. One thing I do want to point out is I think it offers a, at least a potential for a much better pedestrian crossing in Bartlett, even that's right where the transition is. Uh, and uh, yeah, we had some of this discussion already. And to the other comment is, you know, a number of lanes you have depends entirely and what happens at nearby intersections and local conditions. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Mahan. Um, just sort of a follow-up to that, because um, this sort of got raised in my mind, and I know we're striping a very, I believe we're striping a very limited area around Route 60, which is adjacent to the bike path going in front of the bank. Sure. There. What are the circumstances that are different from this area of Mass Ave that we don't, with that exception of that. I mean, if you say it can't be done, it can't be done, but we're obviously doing it in a very small designated area. Um, what is it that this area doesn't have that East Arlington, that stretch does? Because I was, I was sure. curious about that also. Just so I understand, the Route 60 area, you mean the, the safety, the, the, the pedestrian and bicycle safety project we have going on between the two sections of the bike path? Yes, and I, I don't know if I'm saying, uh, Pleasant Street to Mystic. Is that Route 60? Yes, yes. Yes. So the project that we're working on there um, is to, to try to improve the uh, mobility of the vehicles through the intersection as well as pedestrian and cycling uh, mobility. We have the two ends of the bike path that, mm -hmm. um, that, that generate a, a lot of usage uh, um, for cyclists through that area. Uh, so the reason we're able to get bike lanes through there is we're going to be removing parking mm -hmm. on the side of the road to free up the space for bike lanes. Uh, that's what's proposed for that stretch um, from Pleasant Street to Swan Street. Where actually, the proposal is to remove parking to free up the area. We didn't feel that removing the parking through the stretch from Mill Street to Pleasant Street uh, would be had, as received as well. Nor did, was the, the cycling uh, counts as great as they are between the two sections of the Minuteman bikeway. Okay, so if I, if I get the question, East Arlington, and the Heights, where we do pretty much have designated bike lanes. You've already given the explanation for the East Arlington Mass Ave section, um, the explanation for the dedicated bike lanes um, from Whole Foods up to the Arlington Lexington line is we now revert to a, if I'm saying the right word, one lane, one lane. Mm -hmm. So that gave you the space and the opportunity to do that. Sure. But in terms of the topography, the usage on that limited stretch in Arlington Center, yes. with the exception of that project, pedestrian right. bicycle project in the center, yes. that's the most we could do. Correct. Uh, there, are, there are sections from um, Lachlan to Lexington where we didn't have room for bike lanes. We put Sharrows, the shared lane markings, and there will be shared lane markings through the section in front of Town Hall as well. Mm -hmm. okay. J just when I get the sure. question, that's yep. all. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion from the audience? Good evening. Hello. Uh, my name is Bruce Kulik, uh, Grove Street in Medford, Massachusetts. Actually, West Medford, so I sometimes find myself in Arlington more than I do in Medford Center. Mm -hmm. Don't tell anybody that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an avid bicyclist, and I do frequent Mass Ave to go to uh, grocery shopping and so forth. So I have reviewed these plans as well and have a few suggestions that I'd like to make with regard to them. Um, the first is that although you've indicated that in a 10 and a half foot lane, the Sharrow should be in the middle of the roadway, uh, I would like to see that philosophy extended to any lane which is not at least 15 feet wide because in order to safely share automobile traffic and cycle traffic side by side, you really do need at least 15 feet. 
So I would like to see that. I, I think there's only a small stretch where that would be the case, but otherwise um, it's great to see that you do intend to have the Shero is in the middle of the lane. I would like to see that augmented as well by signs which remind motorists of state law that bicyclists may use the full lane. You may have seen those in other communities. And as a cyclist, I find that's uh, very powerful because it means that even though you have the Shero, a lot of motorists don't know what that means, but the sign is unequivocal. unequivocal. It says um, you can use the full lane. Uh, additionally, um, there was some comment about, which I had not really realized previously, on Mill Street uh, making the left turn lane to be uh, left only. And I have discovered that the traffic sensor, uh, in fact, I've actually had some, uh, some um, <coughs> conversations with your uh, engineer, I think Wayne, is that his name? Yeah. Yes. And uh, we have talked about a few other intersections, but to make sure that the traffic sensors for the left turn signals will be actuated by bicycles <coughs> as well. I do believe that's all my comments. Oh no, there is one more. In some cases, you have a bicycle lane which is adjacent to an eight foot wide um, parking lane. And in my experience, that's really not quite sufficient because the average small car is really about six feet wide. When the door is open, that extends another two to two and a half feet. And when you include the shy distances, you end up taking up a great portion of the bicycle lane. And that really encourages a type of uh, accident referred to as dooring. I'd like to see in those cases that either a little more space be provided to the bicycle lane uh, or that the bicycle lane be eliminated and that share was be put in at that spot instead. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Really welcome your comments. You, I, I know you live in Medford, but yes, you might correct. want to check out the Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee. Yes, I have gone to some of their, uh, their uh, meetings as well. Glad to hear it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on this agenda item? Yes. Just one short comment, and that is um, you're presented here with an exciting opportunity to try out a three-lane design without waiting two more years to do it on Mass Ave. And that uh, you could provide the safety uh, for all users this summer instead of waiting. So. I hope you seize that opportunity. Thanks. We appreciate your comments. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. <coughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, so on the agenda, you'll see that in the next three items, um, it talks about some water and sewer rates. I, I will recommend if it's okay with my colleagues, that we move the Arlington Teosente uh, City Project above those discussions, as I think that might be uh, appropriate to handle first in, in a timely manner. And I see them waiting patiently. So please, Elizabeth Dre. Thanks very much. My name is Beth Salzberg. I've been a volunteer with the Arlington Teosinte Sister City Project for about a decade, and I'm here with Elizabeth Dre who's the executive director, also a volunteer. Heather Smith, another volunteer, is here with us tonight. Uh, this is Rachel Barglow entering fifth grade at Brackett and Rafi Barglow entering eighth grade at Audison. It's been 26 years now since Arlington and Teosinte de El Salvador became sister communities. That relationship started during El Salvador's Civil War and we're very proud that Arlington is one of 19 communities across the United States that chose to partner with a village of Salvadoran refugees who were in the process of returning home and trying to uh, rebuild their houses and survive during a civil war that continued for four more years. So it's been 26 years now. A lot of people from Arlington have traveled to Teosinte and made deep connections there. Um, a lot of a uh, wonderful cultural exchange has happened. Uh, five years ago, our elementary schools adopted a fourth grade curriculum about Teosinte, which includes a letter exchange that kids here do with kids in Teosinte. Our um, Spanish students at the high school translate those letters. So it's really become a very rich connection that's touched many people in Arlington. This February, for the first time, kids from Arlington had the opportunity to go to Teosinte, and Rafi and Rachel are among those. 
and we're happy to present tonight a hand-painted plaque that the town council of Teosinte asked us to share with, with Arlington. And I'll just mention that, so there were two families, Elizabeth's family and mine, who traveled together to Teosinte, uh, five kids in total, and we brought 11 suitcases with us filled with school supplies and medical supplies donated by people in the town. The schools all had drives, uh, Girl Scout troops. It was an incredible effort. And um, so we tried, when we were there, to, to represent the community and to bring greetings and good wishes from our whole town. And so the village of Teosinte is sending those back. And um, Rafi's just going to read this in Spanish, <coughs> and then we'll translate. Un lindo regalito de la comunidad Teosinte para la ciudad hermana de Arlington con mucho Amor y cariño, friends forever, February 2014. A beautiful gift from the community of Teosinte to our sister city, Arlington, <coughs> with much love and affections, friends forever. So what we would love is uh, if the town hall would be gracious enough to find a place that we could hang this on the wall and so that the entire community of Arlington <coughs> can uh, enjoy this gift from Teosinte. Thank you. We'd be happy to find a spot. That's really a beautiful painting that you have there. And um, what a great reading as well. Thank you very much, Rocky and Rachel. <coughs> um, do we have any comments from the board? Yes, Mr. Kiro. Well, I, I just want to thank, you know, um, the whole committee, um, you know, Beth and Elizabeth do a lot of work. They sell a lot of, um, you know, every year, um, several times a year, they have uh, sales of, of handmade goods that are made in uh, Teo Sinte, usually set up at somebody's home or whatnot. I don't, I keep my wife away. I, I go and do the shopping for her. And, uh, don't keep her away. I don't know. I want to, I, want to, I, I buy the coffee. Um, but I, I first, first met, I think, Beth. It must have been seven or eight years ago when I chaired the uh, Human Rights Commission. I know that the Teo Sinte um, exchange was being kind of, I think, kind of reactivated at that point. And you've just done just a fabulous uh, job uh, getting it going. The partnership with the schools is a true partnership. Arlington Education Foundation has supported a lot of the, the, the work, um, sent over a number of our teachers um, to Teo Sinte to come back to, to be able to. Uh, to really truly um, provide a great um, enrichment experience. So in these days when we hear about, you know, the crush of the Common Core and standardized testing and all this and that, uh, it's wonderful to have th these real community uh, interconnections and, and educational opportunities for our um, our, our students, um, and to see that you know really the activism still still alive. So um, thank you for coming in and thank you for this beautiful. Um, Beautiful gift. It really is. If I could just make one more comment, is I'd like to invite the, the Board of Selectmen and the Selectmen as well as the community of Arlington to our photo exhibit that's actually currently uh, hung out here on the second floor of the town hall. We'll be having a reception on Wednesday night and the Honorable Joe, Joe Kiro will be saying a few words uh, at that event. Uh, Paul Giger, who is a Arlington parent and a social photo documentarian, uh, visited Teosinte in November of last year and took some photos while he was there. Uh, he's doing a three-stage project on Teosinte and uh, the results of the first stage are currently hanging out here on the second floor. So I hope uh, you guys take a moment to enjoy them and we welcome everybody to our uh, reception on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Chair, I'd like to move that we graciously uh, receive the, the gifts from Teosinte and that we um, uh, send a letter of thanks to the um, it would be the town council of, of Teo Sinte for, for the presentation. Thank you very much. I, th I think that's a great idea. Do we have a second? Second. <coughs> Excuse me. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nothing to Thank you so much. That was Thank excellent. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> we pass that because so we can take a look at it. Moving, so we will be going back to agenda item 10. Discussion, FY15 water sewer rates. Mr. Chaplain, Mr. Rademacher. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so there is uh, one 
memorandum that was provided to the board that addresses uh, both items number 10 and 11. So to start with item 10, uh, a little bit of background as the board remembers around this time last year, uh, we had a pretty comprehensive rate study that was presented to the board in regards to water sewer rates. Uh, and the board at that time voted to uh, create new, uh, a new tiering structure for water sewer rates uh, and increase rates for FY14 uh, to increase the sustainability and the viability of the water sewer enterprise. Uh, and at that time, uh, that uh, rate suggestion or that rate study also talked about moving to quarterly billing as well as eventually implementing uh, a winter seasonal use to address uh, irrigation uses as part of the study. Uh, also as part of that study, there was the anticipation of the need for a rate increase in FY15 for water sewer. However, uh, after analysis uh, by the water sewer division uh, led by Mr. Rademacher, uh, it's become apparent that FY14 collections have demonstrated that there is no, re, uh, no need to ask for a rate increase in FY15. Uh, so uh, really what would be for the first time in several years, uh, we are suggesting to the board that there be no water sewer rate increase uh, for FY15. So there's really no vote necessary under 10, uh, but wanted to just present that uh, to the board and let the board ask any questions uh, that they might have about that. Very welcome news. Thank you, Mr. Chaplain. Um, Mr. Dunn. So I'm definitely, it's welcome news, but it is also surprising. Uh, do we know what, do we have any theories about what's causing change in the usage? Do you want to take it? Or? Uh, I, I know only that it, it um, didn't continue to drop uh, like the trends we had been seeing in the past of about a 5%, oh, I'm sorry, a 2% decrease in usage uh, didn't occur. And actually there was a little bump in usage and that is why um, FY14 is a little bit better than we had anticipated, and we are hoping that trend continues in 15. Okay. Uh, has our loss rate changed? Uh, slightly. Um, it's it's too it's um, closer to 23 to 24 percent down from about 29. Uh, the other um, uh, the other factor that maybe I didn't put in the memo that uh, is causing us to be able to uh, hold the rates is our uh, assessment from the MWRA it was pretty much uh, flat from uh, 14 to 15. Uh, this was in part by, I believe, reducing the unaccounted for water and from all the sewer work we're doing. We're sending a lot less um, clean water to the MWRA for treatment, so our metering has gone down on the sewer side as well. So we've been able to reduce our water and sewer use to a greater amount than our surrounding <coughs> communities, which in result causes us to have a smaller um, share of that cost. One more, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. Please, please <laughs> um, so I guess I'm really encouraged to hear that <coughs> that change. And I just want to, I don't know, encourage the, the, you and the town manager to continue to invest in uh, reducing our loss, loss of rates, because that to me still seems like the, it's kind of the silver bullet through our rate increases that we can continue to conserve and not have rate increase so long if we can continue to drop that number. So um, I don't know if you need any assistance or a twisting of arms at times to, you know, to get that up on the budget, but I'm, I'm a big fan of it. Well, uh, to preview a future Board of Selectmen's meeting, we will eventually need your assistance in putting some future programming in place to reduce infiltration into the system in terms of um, illegal connections via sub pump or other uh, drainage systems. So that's, that's something we're currently working on in coordination with the DEP as part of a townwide program that will do exactly what you just described and we'll be here to talk about that in the future. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Ms. Mahan. I just want to check in terms of process. I just have a, a question on the um, July admin holiday charge. Are you taking that section by I, section? I was going to talk about that uh, okay, under wait. the next Sorry. item. Sorry, I didn't, wasn't paying attention at the beginning. You not paying attention to me? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chaplain? Uh, are we prepared to move on to uh, item number 11? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Uh, thank you. So under item number 11, we have uh, several actions. We'd uh, asked the board to take to continue to meet up with what the rate recommendations or the study recommendations were last year. Uh, first, we would like the board to adopt officially quarterly billing as of July 1st. Uh, and what that would do is, uh, as you know, we currently bill semi-annually or every six months. Uh, so we would go to a quarterly billing. Uh, so we would be increasing the billing frequency. And we'd want to start that on July. Uh, and to do that, uh, we would basically be cutting the, um, the CCF count on the rates in half. And in the memo provided, um, uh, Mike put together, you can see how that would work. So instead of 
zero to 30 CCFs for six months, it would be zero to 15 for three months. Uh, so it would fluctuate the rate chart in that regard. And it would also um, cut the administration fees in half as they show up on the bill. It wouldn't create another quarter of admin fee. It would just um, spread them amongst the four bills in a different fashion. Uh, next, um, in regards to the uh, July bill admin fee, to start quarterly billing, we need to get everybody on the same schedule to create the first quarterly bill in July. Uh, so that would create a situation where there's people who get uh, a bill for as much as uh, five or six months. Six months down to one month. Uh, so charging an admin fee in that particular month uh, wouldn't be fair to people who paid their semi-annual bill most recently. Uh, so one, one thing that uh, Mr. Rademacher recommended, uh, which I think is a very uh, uh, appropriate recommendation, is to waive the admin charge for July while we reset everybody in order to not um, sort of uh, inequitably harm uh, someone who's getting reset onto the new schedule. And then the last piece uh, that we're asking for board action on is changing the payment period uh, that is currently uh, from 60 days uh, to 30 days so that we weren't having people uh, potentially take 60 days paying their bill and then getting another bill uh, right after that. With the shortening of the billing frequency, uh, we're also recommending a shortening of the payment period that's allowed. Thank you, Mr. Chaplain. From the board. So quarterly billing, I want to make sure I may have misheard you, it will start in October, not in July, correct? Right. Will the first start in bill July? will be July, correct? Well, we'll have a, a, a bill in July, and then, the and then the next three months will be the first town-wide quarterly bill, yes. Okay. And then um, in terms of the July admin fee, um, I see a million dollars and I see 120000 The actual cost that we have to absorb is 120000 that's, the, that's yeah, what we would, yeah. yeah, essentially um, not get in the admin fee for that. And what, what is the million? One-time bump of approximately one million. What's the rest Correct. of that sentence? So as we send a bill in July that bills the entire town, but, you know, staggered based on what, when each section paid their last bill, that's kind of a, an up, it's kind of collecting in advance of when we typically would have for some of those sections, either one month or two month or three month in order to get them all. So, um, it's, it, we collect, we're collecting that million dollars a bit sooner than we would have if we stayed on the current um, schedule of billing that we have now. It's, it's not money that isn't owed, it's just collecting it sooner. And I assume we're, we're saying one time in stagger that when we do <coughs> convert to quarterly, everybody will get bills Correct. approximately the same time. The entire time. More will, staggering. Yes. And then um, my only other question is um, with the first um, unveiling of this process whenever you all determine this is something that's commencing. Am I correct that besides on the web page maybe something might be included in the water bill, sort of an explanation um, to the residents and or businesses that you know this is what you're getting, you're used to it twice a year, now will be four times a year, da 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 da. And then if you're sending something out like that if you could also um, include, you know, any resident that has any concerns about questioning water usage and or if there's any sort of avenue of relief that for some reason if this system um, really affects their current economic situation, I don't know if there's like an appeal board or a thing like that that's, you know, payment plan. But if, if you're sending something out like that, which I assume there'll be some sort of, we're doing something new, this is what it is, if you could take the opportunity. Yeah, we, we did that for the tiering last year, so I'm sure we can do that again for the, the new quarterly system. <coughs> Thank you. Ms. Greeley? Yeah, so the, um, uh, so this has been cleared with Steve Gilligan, I assume, right? He's been involved. In it has been cleared, out of the budgeted, planned, correct. And we will send something out in July to all the residents explaining this change? With the bill. So, It'll go on the July bill. With the July bill. We've been sending something in the billing to date, yep. like a slip explaining okay. what's coming up. And then in the July bill, when we send it to the entire town, there'll be information as to why your bill is the way, the way, it, the way it is and what to expect in the upcoming months. And the, what we've discussed at another meeting, the winter quarter charges on sewer, is it possible to institute at this time with this? So we can't institute that until we have our quarters in place so that's why the recommendation has start quarterly billing on July 1st 2014 and then begin that the winter use sewer billing on July 1st 2015 once we have a quarter bill we'll actually have a winter build quarter that we can use okay. thank you
Thank you. Move approval. Um, Mr. Dunn. Second. Um, what, on the, I was just thinking about the same line of thought as Mr. Greeley. On the winter bill, or the winter quarter, is there a reason? So the bill that comes in, th so this is not thinking about the vote that we're taking right now. This is thinking about in next year. Uh, will this, my, so the rate will be set for my December to March, is that right? Or sorry, January, February, March. And then my usage in April, May, June will be billed to me in July at the rate relate that was set in that winter. Is that right? Is that what we're thinking? That conceptually, that's correct. We're okay. still working out some kinks on which, which months in the winter would be used. And yeah. There will be some folks that maybe are away for the winter, and we're going to have to yeah. play with that winter period for, for some accounts. But yes, there will be a, some three-month period in the winter for each account, which would then be build forward. So we have a reasonable expectation that this is the last summer that someone would be charged for watering their lawn, the sewage charge related to that. Not for sure, but reasonably. That's, that's a reasonable, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a reasonable expectation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <coughs> anyone in the audience here to discuss this agenda item? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five. Vote. Moving on, discussion and vote condominium billing policy for water and sewer. Mr. Chaplain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so the board may recall uh, back in the fall, uh, representatives of the Kentwood Condominium Association came before the board uh, to talk about concerns they had uh, with the town's condominium water sewer billing policy. Uh, and um, that existing policy, uh, which is detailed in a memorandum uh, that Mr. Rademacher provided to the board, uh, basically provides condominiums with the, the benefit of being treated like a single family home. Uh, back, uh, I, apparently back in the early 1990s, the way condominium associations were treated in Arlington was, uh, presumably they would have one meter, uh, and that was a larger meter that had a higher admin fee and the water that would be used would be charged at whatever the tiering charge was at that point. Uh, so if you were uh, a larger unit such as the Kentwood, uh, you'd pay uh, a larger single admin fee uh, for a meter, and then you would pay whatever your water usage was up against the tiering charges. Uh, at that time, uh, an, a group called the Arlington Multifamily Association came before the Board of Selectmen uh, to request uh, some relief from that. And what that resulted in was instead of paying at the higher tier, taking the water usage, dividing it by the number of units, uh, and charging based on each individual unit's use, which would pr predominantly keep it out of the higher tiers and bill it like it was at a single family usage. But to bill one single family administration fee or administrative fee for each of those units. Uh, so for example, uh, in the case of um, the Kentwood, uh, that S that situation today saves them about $600 a year as opposed to the old system. Uh, so in preparation for tonight's discussion, Mr. Rademacher and I had a, a number of discussions. Uh, and Mr. Rademacher in particular did a great deal of research that he provided in the memorandum that was provided to the board. Uh, and what we uh, discovered is that uh, our situation is either similar or more, um, more fair than what most of our surrounding communities do. Um, uh, it's been identified that Somerville, Cambridge, Burlington, Westford, and Watertown uh, either perform the cal uh, calculation that we do uh, or don't perform it at all, which uh, creates a higher cost for the user. So we, we, we really looked at, uh, at this uh, upside and down, and we were just can't uh, come to a rationale that would create what I've, what I've dubbed sort of a most favored nation status for condominium owners where uh, they would, would not pay uh, an administration fee or administrative fee or a lower administrative fee than a single family home, but also not pay the higher tiered rates that large water users, uh, users use. Um, so the rationale for that position is laid out again in Mr. Rademacher's memo. Um, understanding it's a, a difficult position, um, but again, to be fair to the entirety of water sewer users in the town uh, between single family condominium and multifamily users, that's the recommendation of uh, myself to, to the board tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chapdelaine. Um I believe we will hear from 
many residents tonight, but does any board members have um, anything they'd like to add before we hear from the audience? No. M moving on, Mr. Marr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I very much appreciate the opportunity to speak on behalf of the uh, Kentwood Board of Directors led by Ann Doherty. Uh, we have a number of uh, residents here from the Kentwood as well as Watermill Place. And with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I would just ask them to raise their hands to, to show uh, their interest in this matter. Uh, we hear, by the way, and I want to stress this most emphatically, here in the, in, uh, in the spirit of cooperation, not confrontation. Uh, we think uh, that the action of the board back in 1993 that essentially determined to treat each individual unit, a condominium unit owner, as a single family is exactly appropriate because that's in fact what we are. We are individually owned units just as any uh, family living in, uh, in a single family, two family, three family home. So we think that the action of the board was appropriate. What we question here is why the town continues to charge a much higher administration fee as opposed to a single family house. You're reading one meter at a single family house. You're, meet, you're reading one meter in the basement or the garage of, water, of, of both Watermill Place as well as uh, Kentwood. Now, we're not here to say that we ought to be treated, charged the exact same administration fee as a single family house. We admit, and with great deference to the town manager and the director of public works, who, by the way, throughout this process have been extremely cordial and cooperative and courteous to us, and we acknowledge that. What we're suggesting is there must be some sort of middle ground here that we could reach. We concede, for instance, that the water meter is a larger water meter at the condominiums, and the cost of amortizing that ought to be reflected in the administration fee appropriate for the, uh, 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 to that uh, condominium association. We concede, for instance, as well, that uh, if there is a non-payment, although this has never happened as, I, as far as I understand it, that if there <coughs> has to be individual letters sending out, sent out from the treasurer saying it, it goes to each individual unit owner as opposed just to the condominium association, that's a cost too. I think it's more theoretical than realistic because at least with regard to the Kentwood and I expect the Watermill Place, and I, I don't think that's ever happened, but it potentially could happen. It does require some additional reprogramming of the software. There's a cost associated with that. So we concede the, all of these points and we're not here, please don't understand, we're here saying charge us the $40 which is charged to the individual homeowners, but please don't charge us the $2,600 for reading one meter the same as each individual homeowners. We're asking to be treated fairly, but we think that there is an area of cooperation and compromise, and we would request that the board consider referring this back to the manager, and we could, <clears throat> I'd be certainly on behalf of the Kentwood, and I would hope on behalf of the Watermill Place, I have to believe that there is some common ground that we could reach. Now, if we did agree to this, or if you, if you chose not to, if you chose to go along with what Kentwood is suggesting, there is going to be an effect on individual homeowners. We understand that. But if you look at, I mean, the effect would be de minimis. I think it's more uh, theoretical than realistic because it would, be, it would go up very, very, very minimally, I think. So <clears throat> our request is that you table this and refer it to the manager. Uh, to meet with myself. Um, I can't believe that there wouldn't be an opportunity for us to come to some uh, resolution. And I want to just point out one, one further point. It's, I think, we're asking only to be treated fairly. But again, being the lawyer that I am, I must point out, we had a previous letter to you that we think the law is, with all due respect, on our side because the law clearly says, the Supreme Judicial Court has stated, stated that you cannot charge an administrative fee that is not reflected in the actual expense associated with the service being provided. So it's one meter reading and it's the same meter, that, it's maybe not the same meter, but you're me really still reading just the one meter. And to multiply 
that rate, $40 times the number of unit people in that building, does not, in my humble opinion, pass legal muster. Uh, again, compromise, I think, is possible here. And what we're respectfully requesting is that the board consider uh, referring this back uh, for a hopefully a very happy and quick resolution of some compromise rate, which I'm sure we could uh, uh, find uh, in a spirit of we're all Arlingtonians here and we're acting, asking only again to be treated fairly, not exactly the same as homeowners, but some middle ground. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Meyer, I think we might uh, have a question from the board from you, if that's okay. Mr. Greeley? Yeah, so John, you, you complimented Adam and Michael on how cordial and wonderful they've been, so why aren't we at the compromise now? What, uh, what, I'm sorry? Maybe I should ask them, but why haven't we already reached the compromise? Because it didn't dawn on me until late this afternoon that uh, maybe there was a way that we could, uh, we could I didn't, I've never suggested to them before. I think they were the un, under the understanding that we were adamant that it couldn't be more than the $40. We needed to be treated exactly the same as single family homes. And I, after speaking with my uh, chairman of the, uh, the um, Board of Trustees, I think, you know, I didn't, I left a message for Adam at six o'clock on his phone and I came here early and I approached him uh, in his office, and I think there's some willingness he can speak for himself. But uh, it's my fault, I, Kevin, that I didn't, uh, didn't broach this idea before. Okay, thank you. So may I continue? Yes, just, so I'd like to ask Adam or Michael, is that what we should do at this point, or do you want a lot more input? Um, should we table it, do you feel, at this point? I'm so, asking your opinion. But. So um, my opinion is, um, I'm always happy to take up an offer uh, to, to study something further if there's a clear disagreement. So I'll, I'll absolutely sit with Attorney Marr and have the discussion. Uh, but I'll say in, in full disclosure, not to speak for Mike, but I know Mike and I do have concerns about uh, the challenges that our current software system uh, provides us in terms of uh, reprogramming further and further specialized uh, specialized billing structures for different types of users. So we do go into it with those concerns, and we go into it with the, the concerns of the, the challenges of coming to um, a different number that would be, I guess, further or differently substantiated than what we already feel is substantiated. Um, not insurmountable challenges, but certainly discussions to be had. Uh, Mr. Dunn. I just have some questions because I, I don't recall uh, some of the details, um, and some of them I don't think I've asked before. <laughs> so how much, so we're, the current billing that they're getting is, is it this, is it uh, just done what we approved just now? It's a uh, 2142 semi-annual, so it'll be $10.71. Is that the number that we're talking about for uh, the different, as in each Charged. unit is being charged that amount? Uh, I'm trying to get, uh, what I'm trying to get at is how much money are we talking about? Yeah, so we're, yeah, we're talking about what would be uh, today the, Twenty-one dollar and forty-two cents, or the um, well, the quarterly ten seventy-one multiplied by four, okay. by the sixty-four units in the Kenwood, or whatever the condominium association size is. Okay. Then my next question is: um, so it's, it's it was how many? Oh, sorry, how many units again was it in the Kenwood? Sixty-four. Is that, Six, is that? sixty-four? And then, just do you have any sense of the scope of how many other condos uh, across town that this would be? A, an, a, like a fact, like is it, you know, is it? I, I don't have a sense of how many you know buildings so this is. It's it, it's got a differing effect on all sorts of different mm -hmm. sizes and shapes of condos. Yep. So, some condos share a meter that would be affected by this. Some condos, as they've been condoized, have split out to two meters, and they don't have this problem at all because they've got their two meters. Uh, so it, it's it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly what percentage, we, we, you know, where the bend is on on. Win or lose on this. A thousand to five thousand units, five hundred to a thousand units, or is it just a while? Or am I pushing too hard? Um, probably say it's probably in the five hundred to a thousand units, but I, I obviously I double check that. Thank you, <coughs> Skiro. I think some of my questions are the same as uh, Mr. Dunn's. I mean, I think I'd feel more, and I know it's a lot more work, but I'd feel more comfortable kind of quantifying it somehow. Even recognizing we've got that huge variance, but I, I feel like when we've we've come up against this, um, 
before and some questions about you know, the level of administrative fees that we've uh, charged. Like we had a one that that's, is uh, fresh in our memories from a year or so ago. Um, we, we've tried to quantify the, the costs underlying the, um, uh, the charge, and I think I feel more comfortable doing that, recognizing that we probably can uh, get to in a reasonable range on that, but given the high variability between the, the um, sizes of the condo associations, I, I have to suspect that we can't, uh, you know, hit the bullseye right on. Yeah, that is a challenge. Yeah. Hey, you know, That's it. Ms. Mahan. I'm not sure the direction that we're going in, but in the event that um, this is tabled, I'd just like to make a just a few comments. Um, one thing I would say is, you know, whatever is done, um, any sort of cost absorption as a result of any change, whether it's the calculation of the formula and or uh, software changes or possibly having to buy totally new software to do this, um, I would not be in favor of passing that on to the residents which is a benefit to the two condo associations. I, I just don't think that's fair. And if going forward that is table, I would like approximations of, of what those costs would be. The other thing is, um, it's, it's my understanding that, you know, years ago, and, and Mr. Maher was here, that the request was made and, and the then board agreed that we would treat the condo associations um, similar to single family residences. And we sort of tailored are customized, you know, re-identified what they are um, in terms of clarification. And what I'm hearing now is there's a request for a further clarification, a <coughs> further sort of customizing to tailor um, uh, for the two condo associations. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't have that conversation and we can't come up with that, but I'm also thinking of all the, you know, residences, whether single family or not. <coughs> Um, who are going to say, you know, well, why don't you sit down with me and find a way to, you know, get some fees lowered for me? All, you know? So my thing would be if for some reason we did that exercise, you know, I can see single, two-family, et cetera, residences asking for the same relief, and I'd like to know what the cost impact of that would be. You know, first of all, would it even be possible with the manpower, people power, you know, that we have, or is that just such a mute? Right now we're basically, we're talking about a lot of, people in, in condos, but we're talking to condo associations. I'm just, I'm just thinking if, if you do one thing for one group, what if the other group wants it? Is that something we can perform and, and or what's the cost affixed to that? Um, then um, the only other thing, and I'm going to respectfully disagree, and I am only a court reporter, um, but I know Mr. Marr knows and, and Attorney Meyer and Attorney Heim knows, I do my best to really apply the limited knowledge that I have in terms of my legal background. Um, and I'll just respectfully disagree on the citations of law that um, you have given us in the past. I'd, I'd, to sort of simplify it to me, it's when a judge would say it's an apple's orange uh, sort of comparison counselor, you know, when I've been in a courtroom. But I certainly do not have the, the year's experience. It's just, but I have gone through that, the citations that you gave and looked into them, spoke to town council as well as a couple of other attorneys who have said to me, based on what you're telling me, it appears you may be correct. So I just respectfully disagree. And, but that's something if we go down that road, a court will ultimately decide. So um, am I hearing that this is something that we're going to table? And I mean, I'm hearing a request from Mr. Maher that he would like to give one more shot at it. I mean, I don't know I don't what my think we have a to. motion. Yeah, so, I mean, so, so for me to be a, very clear, I feel uh, in cooperation with uh, Mr. Rademacher that our current system is fair uh, when we compare it to other communities and internally. So we, we strongly feel that it is fair. But being the water sewer commissioners, if the board's decision is to have us take a closer look, I am willing to do so. So that, that's my position. Now, do we have anyone else in the crowd that would like to speak to this agenda item. I think that we're having a pretty good discussion up here, but there, I would like to give everyone else an opportunity to speak. Please come forward. I'm John Chamberlain, a um, unit owner in the Kentwood and also a member of the board of the Kentwood. And first I want to thank John for a very excellent presentation and for an offer of compromise, which I think is what we all are looking for here. 
Uh, I just want to ask one question, first of all. This administrative fee, I do not know the history of it. Is it actually designed to reflect a true administrative cost, or is it simply an added revenue stream? So I, I, I think uh, this fee is go, goes by different names in different places, administrative fee, base meter fee. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is uh, and was initially created to represent the base level of service necessary to get water to a house into a meter and administer the service. Okay. So, so that if you didn't use any water, but you still had access to the water, right. there would be a fee associated okay. with it. So there is some basis in, in right. actual administration for it. Correct. So I think that a compromise that represents the true, as far as we can get to a real cost for supplying the Kentwood would make absolute sense. Um, I think our position right now is that our cost is way beyond whatever the real cost is. Um, I don't think I understand that this would result in a loss of revenue to the town, which may raise everyone's rate a little bit. Um, but if you look at it the other way, we have been subsidizing other people's rates for many years. So I think we're simply looking for fairness, certainly not less um, than what is fair. Um, I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? Yes. Mark Kepline, Palmer Street. Um, I don't really have a horse in this race, but uh, it's my understanding that property taxes cover part of the water bill or the water cost for the town. What, 15, 20 percent? Is that correct? Uh, probably closer to 30 percent. 30 percent. Okay. So thus, owners of higher valued property in the town, say with more land, or larger domiciles are thus partially subsidizing those with smaller properties who may use just as much water or maybe not. So in that, in that respect, condo owners, you know, without having a lot of property, are getting a break on their rates through the use of property taxes. So I just want to put that out for you to think of and so that and I don't want the condo owners to feel like they've been slighted all these years with higher administrative fees because they are getting a break this way. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Now, um, we have, does someone have a motion? Well, I'm going to move that we table it with apologies to Mr. Chapdelaine and Mr. Rademacher. Um, because we may come back right to exactly where we are tonight, but uh, I think, you know, I don't think we ever should back away from talking more or whatever, John, you're saying you just came up with something this afternoon. Um, there's enough question in my mind, there's additional information Diane has asked for, so I'm gonna move to table. I'll second the motion. Sit down. Um, I'll support it, but I'll also give. Can I, uh, well, just add my personal color to where to where my. I've listened very close. I came in without. My my thoughts have evolved to, through this conversation. I'm closer to just saying, um, accepting the recommendation as is than I am to tabling. But I'm okay with tabling in particular because I agree that um, you, further conversation could earn goodwill <laughs> that is well well earned for all of us. I will say that uh, it feels like we're talking about forty thousand dollars. And at some point, the amount of time that you spend talking about forty thousand dollars with our town employees becomes, you know, you, you spent too much time and money on it. Uh, I'll also say that one of the I had another thought about um, creative solutions because I appreciated the thought about coming up with creative solutions on this. Is uh, it, I saw our current software is really hard for this type of like customized and un, you, you think to be built in. Um, Maybe there's creative solutions to talk about future years. You know, uh, like, um, I don't know exactly what our thoughts are on the, on the billing systems and when we're going to do, do a lot of investment on them. But, you know, some of the stuff we're doing with the other stuff with the water rates with related to sewer has been a multi-year commitment to, to resolving some things. Maybe there's creativity not just in the terms but in the timeline. I don't know. It's worth putting it out there for it to, to talk about. I, um, I think... I'll support the motion as well, but I'm, I think, siding more with uh, my colleague, Mr. Dunn, in that it, um, perhaps I, I'd be more apt to support 
um, the recommendation from Mr. Chapelain and Mr. Rademacher. But I, I think that having a little bit more negotiation in good faith can't hurt anyone. Um, I will say that I, I don't think this is something that should just stay out there for a while. If we could have these negotiations sooner yeah. uh, than later. Um, and I think we can go from there. But I, um, I look forward to hearing the outcome of those negotiations. Yes. Yeah, and I, I, I want to be clear. I made that motion saying I think there's a chance we end up right where we are mm -hmm. tonight. Mm -hmm. Got it. If, if they've asked for one more session, let's give it to them. Okay. Okay. We, we have a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five nothing vote. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Much. We'll see you again soon. the second one people file out. Okay, seconds up. Um, moving on, number 14, discussion. Hackney Taxi Rules and Orders Update. Mr. Dunn. Uh, so Marianne has been doing this process and uh, I've been working with her um, off and on. She's been definitely carrying all the doing all the heavy lifting on this. Um, and I also note that in addition to what was in the packet, there was something on our desk tonight. There was a note from, it looks like she had a call with someone at the Division of Insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, so on the cover letter in our packet, she outlined some of the changes that she's, uh, that she's collated that I think, I think we can safely say that Marianne is recommending these. That, um, that, and I think that they all, they all make sense to me except for one I'm a little bit concerned about. Uh, so there's a change in the renewal date, there's removal of the ad requirement, uh, there's an insurance change, which I'm going to come back to in a second, um, adding VIN numbers, which is just a makes sense to me, uh, of the, talking about changes about how you keep track of cars that are coming and going, and listing the town on the insurance, I think are all, they, they're all just tighter language and make sense. Um, the one, the changing of the insurance rates, She's had a conversation now with um, uh, Patrick Quinn, who work, who's in insurance here in town. Uh, and I know that, the, and I know Diane has expressed in the past appetite, in particular, she has expressed in the past particular appetite for increasing the limits. I think I share the appetite, but the one thing that I want us to do before we actually take a vote on this is to make sure that we've actively solicited the input from the current um, license holders. So I guess one of the things, so I guess what I was, what I'm, so if we're going to change the rules on the people who currently have the licenses, we should, I want to make sure that we, you know, they are fully informed and have an opportunity to come chat with us. And they haven't seen this yet, ex in, except in so far as they, you know, they read our agenda and came into town hall to get a copy or maybe Adam Kay gave them a login to uh, Novus Web to, to look at the stuff. I'm going to guess that didn't actually happen, but you know what, I, <laughs> you get the point that I'm trying to make. So I guess um, I'm hoping that the board can make a general indication about whether this is the right direction, and I'm hoping that we would then choose to take up a vote at a future meeting. Second. Um, first, thank you very much for all your work on this. I know you're becoming our taxi czar. Yeah, though I will tell you that this one, I've been less involved. Marianne did a lot more on this one. Um, well, thank you, Marianne, Ben. Um, so would you like to vote on any of these tonight, or are you recommending? Let's just see what we get as a consensus of the board, I think. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that I'd be um, personally comfortable voting on the recommendations and then speaking with our, um, the license holders uh, regarding the insurance holders at a future meeting. So you want to you vote everything except for that? Or? Yes, I th yes, that is what I'd, I think um, I'd be comfortable with tonight. But then again, I'm one of five, so I'd love to hear from my colleagues on this. Yes. Um, 
and definitely thank you to Marianne because I know as well as the town manager and attorney Heim, I've been having probably six months worth of conversations on on, on some of these various items, in, including the insurance. Just in terms of uh, process, what I'd be inclined to do, and then I do have a, co a common question on the insurance question. Um, what I'd be inclined to do is, uh, when everything's ironed out in its final draft, we vote the document and the changes in total. Okay. That pre perhaps tonight we receive this and vote it as a draft. Okay. okay. Um, so that if, if anything else is in there, as well as um, insurance, really is something that challenges me. Whether it's talking about retiree insurance and things like that, um, and I see the uh, legislation that's moving through the house to change it. I think it's to one hundred three hundred thousand. Um, my question is, and it doesn't have to be answered tonight, because uh, I'm just not well versed on this, just in terms of, I am if it's medical malpractice, I could tell you in a heartbeat, but beyond that I can't. Um, what is the difference between when uh, the Hackney license owner goes out and obtains insurance through Rush Kent, through Liberty Mutual, versus they say, oh, I'm self-insured? And, and the question is, what is, I just want to make sure we're providing the t protection to the injured party or parties as well as the town. So you saw in additional materials um, these notes from Karen Bloomquist. Um, I myself had also talked to someone from the insurance division about this same issue. And you'll note in uh, her correspondence that she says that the sort of uh, insurance certification uh, of carrying, I'm sorry, alternative means of sort of satisfying insurance um, requirements by carrying a certain amount in stocks and bonds and things like that, uh, that we should refer that question to the RMV. I already spoke with the RMV about that issue. And they didn't really take a position with respect to whether or not this speaks to something like the town's requirements, because that's sort of established for a slightly different purpose. It's more contemplated that each driver, in lieu of having an insurance policy that you just carry on your own insurance like a vehicle, that's sort of more along the lines of what we're talking about with in terms of self-insurance. The town self-insured, but the town also operates as a municipal entity that is capable of taking care of any legal bills or judgments that comes from an incident or medical expenses, things like that related to negligence or an accident or something like that. In, in this case, there is a little bit of ambiguity about whether or not the legislature really intended this alternate path of basically providing some liability coverage <coughs> to extend to something like this. And I'm not sure that I agree with Ms. Bloomquist's uh, assertion that um, we're allowed to have less coverage than is mandated, but not more. So um, I'll have to uh, uh, go a little further in terms of analyzing uh, the, the bills and statutes uh, and what the purpose of that legislation was to be able to discern whether or not there's any reasonable basis for us not to be able to say, yes, I understand that for insuring, not insuring, for covering liability for your vehicle in terms of general uh, purposes for the RMV, you can just carry sort of stocks and bonds in a certain amount, but we're not just saying that. We're saying you're running, you're asking for a license to run a, a, a taxi or hackney. We want more than that for our town residents if you're going to do business here. I think it's my position that we should be able to have more than that, and I have not seen anything from either the insurance division, the registry motor vehicles, or anybody else to date that would suggest that the state law uh, contemplates that type of uh, situation would forbid us from doing that. So I'm happy to go uh, the extra mile and keep working on this issue, but I, I, I do want to let the board know that I have inquired with the insurance division as well as the registry of motor vehicles myself. Am I getting that right? There's so many. Yeah, the registry of motor vehicles myself on these issues, and I, I, I support, I think, what the board is saying that we should be able to ask for more than $10,000 in what's kind of a version of self insurance. Okay, and, and from where I'm coming from is at the end of the road, can we have the, my personal opinion is just seeing the self-insurance versus a risk yeah. management carrier, et cetera, because of the ambiguity, um, it's a nightmare and it doesn't work sometimes and a lot of times to what the intention was when they say, you know, oh, you're going to get the same, you don't get the same. Right. So I want to know that when it comes to the end of the day, um, even if the self-insurance could possibly be an option, um, um, if the board, if three or more of us agree, that 
yes, that's an option. Yes, you say it does that. There is ambiguity. There is case law and trials and you know arbitrations and tribunals where that's fallen on its face and yeah. the injured party, property, municipality has had to bear the cost. Um, I'd like to know that we have the opportunity to discuss and if three or more of us agree to say, yes, it's an option, but we're, it's not an option. We want you know, the same uniform, legit risk management, insurance carrier, whatever. Of course. Because I, I have yet to see self-insurance in these, in terms of bodily harm or property damage. Um, more times than not, they don't. It's more of a, of a goodwill thing on behalf of the person. And some, you do get a lot of goodwill people out there. And if you're driving a, a cab, God bless you, because you've got to put up with a lot of different personalities. So, But thank you for looking into that, and we'll wait. Of course. Okay. So um, move to receive this draft. Um, I, I think that I think your Diane, I think your questions are really good. I thought of a way to I, I thought of something that I in answer to your question what I want out of this. Um, separate from the self insurance issue, does anyone have a strong or even a weak thought about what the insurance limits in general do people think we should be raising them? If so, and do anyone have any thoughts about how high we should be talking about? So we've got you know um, from Patrick Quinn we have. Uh, 50 to uh, 50 slash uh, moving it from 2040 to 50 slash 100,000. We've got this piece of state legislation that's a uh, um, 100 slash 300. Does anyone have any? Well, I, I, with the state legislation, I mean, it it has to pass by the end of July, mm -hmm. or or so we could potentially. I mean, that's not that far off to wait and see if you know they take action on it, mm -hmm. and then that might you know solve this issue for us mm -hmm. um, and I and so I think that that's completely an option and if not you know I, I and I meant to thank Patrick earlier for working with Marianne and us on this I know um, I appreciate his time and um, certainly his opinion on this because you know I think he's you know him and other people who work in the industry might be a bit more you know have a bit more expertise than we do when it comes to re these recommendations but um, if, if we are going to accept this in receipt, I'd, I'd be happy to wait to see if the state takes action. And if not, we can readdress it after that. If, but I'm fine with if anyone else has any ideas too that they'd like to talk to. Yes. And, and perhaps this is something you can get clarification on. or mm -hmm. uh, um, Only because just in the legal world, every word has a certain interpretation and connotation. And I see the House bill speaks about per incident. And I know the insurance policies that I've seen for various different trades, it always says per occurrence. So I'm just wondering where something's going to go through. Are incident and occurrence the same thing? And it's a legal thing. So I mean, I don't need an answer for that tonight, but I'm just saying, you know, th they usually talk about, you know, amounts in the aggregate, and it's usually per occurrence. Um, and, and that has a legal connotation to it. So I'm just wondering okay. if the word incident is synonymous with um, occurrence, because um, somebody may say, oh, well, you had an incident, um, but you had three things happen to you, but because it's not an occurrence, it's called an incident, then you kind of fall on the track. Do you know what I'm saying? If we're, if and we're, I may be yeah, worrying if, about nothing. If we're gonna, if we're gonna table this, uh, we would have some time to check out the okay. actual insurance so policies itself and, and verify that. Yeah, I just want to make, because sometimes, you know, when you get bills yep. from legislators, sometimes they're written from people who operate in the field, and sometimes they're written from well-intentioned people who, mm -hmm. you know, don't know the nuances. Thank you. I'm done. Um, so, we have a motion for a seat, and it seems like that might be appropriate for now to buy us some time to, you know, kind of delve a little bit deeper into it, if that is what my colleagues would agree with. Mm -hmm. So... Any anyone in the audience have anything to add to the conversation? <coughs> Seeing none, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Five nothing vote. Thank you. Okay. So, huh. Our further agendas keep getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. um, moving on. <laughs> Parking subcommittee recommendations. Ms. Mahan. Okay. Um, parking committee, myself, Mrs. Kropelka, 
Uh, Mr. Gilligan and Officer Corey Rateau um, at our subcommittee meeting. We um, discussed three items, which you have um, the details in the packet. Um, the public enforcement of the town-owned meter lots that was mostly from Mrs. Kropelker and um, Officer Rateau, and it, it's, it's pretty cut and dry. I'm not going to, um, unless anybody has questions for myself, um, Ms. Kropelka on it, um, in terms of disputing a ticket and proper signage. The um, third agenda item, 91 Westminster Ave, um, the gentleman who was the requesting person, I think it was Ron Gold, Goldstein, Goldstein, he also attended and um, he also addressed the subcommittee. Um, in the end, we, um, and we had a good 40 minute discussion with him, with everybody around the table pretty much involved. The bottom line is he's asking to, you know, as you know, have two overnight parking spots. Um, he cites he has a historical home. Um, if he put in a driveway like every other person, every other property that abuts him next to him, adjacent to him, that it would A, detract from the historic value, but the subcommittee agreed that's not the case because every other property has done that. Um, then he um, spoke about the cost, and we advised him to actually go out and get some um, proposals on that because it was <coughs> by a, a few of us that it's probably not as a um, costly a cost as he's imagining it to be, as well as, again, his neighbors have done the same thing. The other th thing that came out of the discussion, so he said he was going to do that. He asked the committee if we had any recommendations of who we should contact, and we said, you know, we, could, we can't do that. You know, we told him where he could go if he wanted to. Um, and, but then the last thing is, there was discussion that where he lives in his neighbor, there is a paper street um, that if he wanted, along with his neighbor, he could do as other people have done, and I'm blanking on the name of it, and the town has no plans to ever do anything with it. But basically, they could pave it or gravel it over, and it would, A, um, <coughs> if he doesn't want to break into that wall, give him an opportunity, but his neighbor would have to agree. And one might say, well, why would the neighbor do that? It would enhance both their properties because they've now made use of that paper street um, as a, a benefit to their properties when they use them or sell them in the future. So the uh, unanimous decision of the parking subcommittees to not grant the two overnight parking requests because I think it opens up a huge Pandora's box. In light of the circumstances that all of his neighbors have um, also gone out and obviously it's somewhat affordable and installed driveways as well as he has the third opportunity to possibly investigate this paper street with his neighbors and give them both an additional two if not three pockets. So we, we did as much as we could to help him but our recommendation is to not approve on that. And then, if you want, I'll just try, try to say briefly on, on enforcement of the signs, Newman Way, Bailey Road, all the areas in front of Mass Ave, um, in front of the high school and those streets. Basically, the conversation is, you know, we've gotten some complaints, the signs are up, they're not enforced. Um, so the committee discussed that, but basically we take the time, signs down, let everyone park there, or we leave them up and we enforce them. Um, it was, you know, again, saying that the Board of Selectmen makes this decision. There was more talk around um, enforcing the signs that we have up, uh, as well as in front of the high school, Officer Rateau counted out a mass app in front of the high school. I believe there are 26 spaces. Um, those could be striped off, and those could be similar to what we do with Arlington Catholic, um, available for employee, school employee parking in front of the town hall. Because one of the things we're, we, were, we hear a lot of is, you know, where are the school employees going to park? We have nowhere to park. A, we're trying to help with that, but B, we also have to balance the fact that we have a town hall mm. where about one-tenth or one-twelfth of the employees who work here have parking. So, uh, you know, we're trying to do what we can, but, but it really isn't on the onus for the parking subcommittee or the Board of Selectmen to handle that huge um, school employee parking problem. Um, I did reach out to Principal Jenger, um, but it is the end of the year. Um, we played long phone tag. Um, I did speak with Mr. Carroll. I'll let him um, speak to the, in an attempt to let the schools know um, 
where we should go with that. So basically, the subcommittee said we should start enforcing the signs, get the proper notification out, um, um, possibly provide the 26 spaces in front of the high school on Mass Ave um, for school employees, and if the principal of the high school wants to do like the principal of AC, where he determines who gets that, but there would have to be some identifying um, sticker, which I believe already school staff has an Arlington School Department sticker, so we can just <coughs> adopt that, that that's the um, sticker that you need to pop there. And then the only other thing that one um, Ms. Mr. Gilligan, as treasurer, brought up is um, that we could charge $50 a month to the school staff parking only to park there. I'm not really inclined to do that, but I, because it came up as something to be discussed, um, I place it before my colleagues. Um, do the parking spots at Arlington uh, Catholic, do those teachers and students, they pay $50 a month, correct? Yes, they do. Not a spot. Okay, thank you. Um, and those are in the lot, not the yes, street. But it's the same type of idea with the stickers. Yes, Mr. Mr. Chair, I know that the chair of the school committee is here, and I, I had reached out to him on, on uh, this specific matter here. And I note that we do have a, a memo mm. here, which I don't know if that's from. Looks like yeah. it's from him, um, giving some data around the. Uh, Good evening, Bill Hainer, uh, chairman of the school committee. And I apologize for the lateness of getting that memo to you. Uh, I, when Mr. Kiro reached out to me, uh, I think almost two weeks ago, uh, I asked for this information. Uh, Mr. Kiro sent me uh, the third part of the report, uh, Ms. Mahan, and when I saw that, I reached out to the superintendent this afternoon. I got this late this afternoon. You got it within 20 minutes after I got it to uh, your secretary. First off, um, these numbers that you have here, I have to go with the numbers that are given. I have, as of right now, we have a deficit of 65 spaces. Looking at next year, with increased staff, just teaching staff, and moving a program down from uh, Audison and stuff, we're looking at potentially 80 uh, spots deficit. Um, Parking is a problem in the town of Arlington. I don't have to tell you that. You know it. The only place we can grow is vertical, uh, up or down. I don't know. That aside, um, I appreciate the idea of finding spaces in the front. Uh, Dr. Jenga does not uh, have the authority as far as staff. That belongs to the superintendent. And I would also like to, did we, I, I'd like to ask, is that just on the right side of Mass Ave going up in front of the high school? They weren't looking at the left side on the other side. So staff is only going to increase. Um, on the sheet here, and this is not a threat, please understand it, some of that staff is not school staff. The control of the retirement board, part of the IT and things of that nature. Looking forward to the new high school, God willing, maybe some of this can be rearranged. 50 years ago, when my wife, they're having their 50th anniversary, if you look at the uh, reunion, excuse me, if you look at the yearbook that year, there were eight, uh, over 100 parking spaces in that front uh, lawn. There were also three houses there. I don't know what we're going to do. If this is going forward this way, I would ask you to please provide those spaces dedicated, not at a cost. I reckon no municipal employee to the town should have to pay. Now, I understand Arlington Catholic, and I say this, and I believe it strongly, in separation of church and state. They're a private organization using a public place. I have no problem with that. But municipal employees, whether they call school, town, whatever, I don't think they should have to pay for a parking space to come to work. Thank you. And I'll answer any questions if you want. I don't have it. I don't know. Any questions for Mr. Hanna? I don't, seeing none, thanks, Bill. Thank you. And can I just say a clarification? The reason I reached out to the principal is that if we do start enforcing the two-hour parking on the other streets, I wanted to give him a heads up to start thinking because I anticipate he, with the superintendent, need to notify because there are going to be a lot of kids, I more importantly, parents. I appreciate that. I didn't that. want to step on protocol no, lines. No, no. That, that part, absolutely. Yeah. But I'm mainly speaking for my, our staff. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Is uh, anyone else in the audience here to speak about this agenda item? Seeing none. Um, yes, Mr. So, Real. And, and uh, perhaps this was stated and I missed it. 
What are their total numbers of spaces that are available to them right now? I, I understand the parking deficit is 80. So if the total need is 200, what I say, 261. Mm -hmm. So does that mean they currently have 161 available spaces? I think it says 181, 181 available. They have a deficit of 80. Right here it says for a new total of 261. Oh, there, this part. Yeah, but look at this part. Yeah. Go to my no, he's talking about next year. What the increase will be. 261 is what we will need next year. We currently uh, uh, use 156 right now. I think, uh, I'm sorry. 181, including. 100, when we have 181 sp spaces, we need, we're 65 short. Okay. So I don't know what those 65 people are. In here, I think this is a little bit confusing because it talks about multiple people using the same space. Just a point, school committee have no designated spaces. I constantly get messages on my windshield that I'm going to be have my car towed. <laughs> they don't know who it is, but that's beside the point. Thank you. Just yes. to be clear, we don't either. So you don't. I thought I saw some sign up there. That's for the staff. The staff. That's the staff. That's yeah. staff not you don't get it. Yeah. And yeah. believe me, we don't dare park. In oh. <laughs> we get worse than a sticker. Sticker is <laughs> easy, buddy. <laughs> yes, Mr. Dunn. Uh, so I guess I want to. Respectfully challenge um, Superintendent Bodie uh, just on the number of just I understand that that's the number of employees But there's a difference between the number of employees and the number of spaces that we need Especially as we're trying to push like you know as part of good urban planning You know you're trying to push people to using alternative methods of transportation like biking and public transport and carpooling and stuff like that and so uh, I understand I agree that the number of employees is a really good metric to talk about you know, a relative size of how many t number of spaces we're talking about, but uh, I don't, but there isn't a one, there shouldn't be, a, I mean, if there's a one-to-one, -one, we're doing something wrong, is, is one of the, is, is a thought I'd, I'd like to share. I, I concur. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, please. 153 teachers and assistants, I would say less than a third live in the town. And, they, and we, we, we want the staff to be in place at that time. So to suggest public transportation to, to a staff of a school that size in that area, I think it's... We, we may agree to disagree on this one, Mr. Hainer. And yes, I believe so. Yes, Ms. Mahan. And on that, um, and then I'll get back to the two-hour parking because that's also going to be something that is a big decision. Um, one of the things that we discussed was first, it's not the responsibility of the town. Um, we're, we're trying to do everything that we can to provide parking for staff. Um, one of the feelings which I had was I wanted to refer this issue back to the school committee to say, you know, we're going to be, if we do um, provide 26 designated on the front of the high school on Mass Ave, on the high school side only, along with, and I have had conversations with the town manager who's had just a very preliminary conversation with Mike Rademacher, but being down there, you know, from the sports side, what I call the cul-de-sac area, which is when you come in Mill Street, um, that parking area there, um, I can see that and I've heard other people and I've heard tacit preliminary agreement that that could be redesigned. So would ask the school committee to look at that. And if you look at the current use, I mean, first of all, having that rotary and all that land there, um, with the exception of you have to keep the fire hydrant where it is, everything else can be changed. And when you look at a big sporting event or a high school graduation, you can kind of see the natural course of where some more parking spaces could happen if you graveled or, or um, asphalted and or made a little bit to grade, you know, that area around that little rotary, as well as there's a lot of land, not an acre lot, but there are different pieces of land. If you look where the SUVs park, you know, on the grass, in front of, around the dumpster, you know, could the dumpster be moved back or moved into place so that part of it can't be blocked, you can't park there. But then there's also some grassy area um, where the cliff is, and you see cars park on there. So I was originally thinking, um, ask the town manager to have DPW look into looking at that space, because everybody seems to agree when I'm down there, there are some more parking spaces. They may only be 11 to 18, but there are more. Um, but I figured what we would do is discuss it at the meeting here tonight um, as part of the motion 
when we do whatever we do in front of Mass Ave, as well as are we, are we not going to enforce that two-hour parking on all those other streets, which there are going to be a lot of calls, um, but the signs are up and the committee was to enforce it. Um, have the chair with the town manager, but definitely get this as, in some form a referral, whether it's a phone call, chair to chair or whatever, to ask the school committee with DPW to look at that area there, um, as well as the front of Mass Ave, and then the vote on are we going to enforce the two-hour parking on those adjacent streets, and make sure, again, that would be referral to the school committee to can you please get the word out for September. So we would vote to, in fact, do this, and then we just ask the school committee to spread the word. Is what? Okay. If I see someone's hand over there, Mr. Kira. So I'm wondering, I mean, I think it was raised. Was there any consideration by the parking committee to um, also allocating the spots across the street on, on Mass Ave? And I ask that because I know that's in front of a number of, of banks, but they all have their own parking lots. So it, it seems that it's probably not a big drag on the, the commercial area on that side. And I don't know that there are that many spots over there, but. Was that taken into consideration when the committee um, deliberated not, no, this? No, not extensively, but in, in the sense that um, <coughs> looking at what you do for one, you do the other, as well as you know people who just come down to the high school. What you're doing is you're taking away two-hour parking. So if right. I'm coming to the high school to meet with the teacher, I mean, I'm talking about regular day business. That you know, that's really because again, the spots, with the exception of the five that are like right in the mi middle in front of the high school, those are all reserved. So anybody who wants to come down and do school business, meet with the teacher, you know, anything else, I'm not talking staff, it would really would be unfair to not have those spaces available. But there are a couple of visitor spots at the high school Five. for that for that purpose. I mean, you know how many coaches there are that yeah. fight for those spaces? Yeah. You're talking 50 people right there. Okay. I mean, there's only so much we can do. That was the sentiment. But what, isn't the proposal to have the permit parking in effect just during school hours during 8 to 2 is that the proposal of the of the subcommittee that's how you make it I mean we were just trying to say you know how we could we, yeah. we didn't have that specific a discussion but just by you saying that the very nature is that's what we're doing and then those spaces could revert back because on the one hand I I, I do agree with Mr. Dunn and, 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 and Mr. Byrne that I you know I I think that we should you know, try to provide incentives for um, some of the staff who can and who do live close enough to walk or to, or to take public transportation. And, and I, I think that that's, that's reasonable. And, and I even, in that vein, I'm, I could even support, you know, a modest permit fee. I don't know about $50, $50 because I, I think taking into account, you know, we're going to just see it on the other end. If we're, we're pressing a new placing a new cost burden on our employees. We're going to pick it up in some other way mm -hmm. as a municipality. That's, that's the reality. Um, no, I understand that. Well, we I, understand. I, know, I, I, I do understand that. Um, <clears throat> but I think looking at what the, co the comparative cost is for a bus pass versus, versus, versus that, I think that's a, probably a fair, um, a fair measure. But I think I think that we do also have some obligation to our employees to find some reasonable inventory there. And I don't know that 26, you know, towards a potential deficit of 80, it's probably, the deficit is really probably a lot less than that, but still it, it seems like it's, it's um, we're not quite there to just providing those 26 on street. And I, I'd love to see it if, if we could get a, a sense of what the number are on the other side of the street looking at a permit program that went from 8 to 2. I mean, I, I mean because the coaches co will come in at, at 2, right? I mean, General? Uh, uh, follow me one day. <laughs> Joe, I, yeah. uh, Corey, if we were talking, there's probably only maybe at the max 10 across because you have a crosswalk at, um, yeah. school, at Schooler and Lachlan. Then there's another crosswalk where the light is in front of the bank. Is it? In Brookline Bank, I don't no, know what it is. Yeah. So there's only that stretch of parking right yeah. there. And I think he said maybe eight spaces when if you marked it out, which is two hours now on that side of the street. So, 
I think what I mean, we got to think back to what is the goal of, of, the, of the signs up on the <coughs> We're trying to keep the students. The from signs are yeah. two hour parking, including on Mass Ave. Yeah. No, so I, we're trying to make a concession. I mean, we can't even take care of all our employees here at Town Hall. Right. With, right. with all due respect, I'm not being sarcastic. This is a school committee and a school administration issue. But what we're trying to do is the parking subcommittee where we look at traditionally who parks in front of the high school on Mass Ave. It's not all teachers, because I've watched the cars, but there are a majority of staff there. So we were trying to find a way um, to say, you know, the town side's trying to help you out, but this is a school committee issue and a school administration issue, and that's why the referral to look at the cul-de-sac parking lot in Bath, because you could get 11 to 16 there. Um, so when you say we need to provide more, I, I mean, what do I say we, to our town? Yeah. Large well, to me, this is a, largely a school committee issue, and we're trying to do what, we, what little we can on our, our end. Or do you want to keep it uniform um, and enforce the signs not only on the side streets, Bailey, Newman Way, et cetera, but also do it on Mass Ave? This was just a compromise. I think the signs are there. They have to be enforced. Mr. Dunn. Yeah, that actually gets really to my, just my question. I want to understand more about the current conditions. So we have signage on side streets currently that is not being enforced. Correct. And on Mass Ave, on the high school side, is there currently signage? It, both sides are two hour parking, yeah. yeah. And both right sides now we're not are current. ticketing. So I just. In my understanding, Diana, am I correct? On the side of the school where the supposedly called teachers and staff park, they get stickers, right? No, they, well, they have stickers that says school department staff, but that's legally right. under traffic rules and orders and the signs that are up, it's two hour park. Who's issuing the stickers? It's stickers that school employees get from the schools. From the schools. From yeah. the schools. To park in their lot? No, to park on the street. To be identified that this car is a school employee, um, or school, de <coughs> not school employee, school department staff, which could include the comptroller, the telephone operators yeah. in the basement. Do those stickers also permit them to park on, in those spaces in the high school on school property right now? Is that what they use to control? Is that, uh, it, Mr. Chairman, if I uh, yes, yeah. so the please. current is so uh, those is, with a few exceptions, they're either designated by name or by a specific number, and that number goes to a specific person. So these stickers are really only used currently for on street stuff. I know nothing about the stickers, to be okay. very honest with you. All right, but I do know in the parking lot. There are either numbered or specifically by name and or title. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, are we moving Can, closer to a motion? Does anyone? Well, how about if I break it out? Wait, Let's, why don't we break out the, some of the other issues, the non school issues, and then we can dispose okay. of those quickly. All right, why don't you, and then, you guys make motions. Yeah. Go ahead. So. Okay. Uh, do you want I, to do Westminster? We're going yeah. to the easy one, town owned lots. Oh, I mean, well, I'm not town. Public enforcement of town owned meter lots is a recommendation from the parking subcommittee. Somehow I'd already missed that one. I saw this. It's on the agenda. What Does is that the require action by us? No. Well, yeah, because we're the, we're the policy decision makers. It's, it's just a recommendation, well, lo largely from um, Officer Rateau. And a lot of it had to do with the faulty meters and sometimes people park there and so, they say, oh, the meter didn't work. So what is what? the vote that you, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't see it. Um, the vote I'm, is to ratify the current um, process, which is if the meters are out and they can't purchase a ticket, what the parking enforcement officers do is they still go around and chuck because you're supposed to be able to get a ticket for two hours. The meters don't. And what they do is when they come back three hours later, if you're still there, they issue a ticket because you still went beyond it, you know, you can get the, oh, I didn't pay the, you know, I think it's a dollar or two dollars. You know, you got the free dollar or two dollars, but um, that, that's, that's what they do right now. So the, Officer Rateau was asking for a ratification of that as well as um, just, again, a ratification because people were saying, oh, I don't have coins or I only have a five or a ten dollar bill that um, that wasn't something that could be waived by the town um, you know, when you park in a, you know, people were trying to say they, you know, they didn't, didn't have coins and they only had a five or a ten. It's unfair that they're being penalized by getting a ticket. And we're saying, no, you know, that's your responsibility. I mean, there's only so much we can do. We do agree. People said, you know, I, 
I should be able to use my credit card, but that's something else that the town manager and town treasurer, we are moving towards that. But basically, you know, you park where you are, you have to accept the circumstances. Um, so it was basically just highlighting those two practices. Um, may, may I make a suggestion? This particular piece of it is in the report, but it's not on the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, and because I think what we're mostly discussing is something that we think that we have a legal right to do, unless the board wants to change the policy, I think the board could move to receive that recommendation, mm -hmm. uh, or, or, or to move to receive, yeah, move to receive that recommendation that we basically keep our policy the way it is, mm -hmm. which would reflect that we have the ability to ticket someone for something we know that they're that they're doing in violation of the existing traffic rules and orders. So on that particular point, you can just move to receive it that recommendation unless someone on the board wanted to change that and not enforce it. Move receipt. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. That's one. One. Does someone want to do I, I move to accept the recommendation of the uh, parking subcommittee for um, 91 Westminster Avenue. Second. Yep. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Back to the schools. Um, Number two, do you want to break it up? Enforcement of signs Newman Way down to Lachlan Ave. Make that one vote and then make a vote on Mass Ave from Carey Way to School of Court. That, that seems appropriate because it seems like everyone's on board that if we have signs up, we should they should then be enforced. Okay, do we have a motion? Yes, so moved. Second. Oh, I'm sorry, could you repeat the motion? The motion is to starting in, and this is where um, I don't know if there's any guidance from, we, we were thinking um, the third week in September to start enforcing the two hour parking on Newman Way, Bailey Road, Churchill Ave, Lachlan Ave. And the reason for that is it gives the school committee and the principal and superintendent enough time to get notice out in the summer. And if we do it the first week in September, or even if we start doing it now, people can say, I was down the Cape all summer, I came back, I didn't know. So to give time to get the word out, because it is going to be, you know. It'll be an adjustment for sure. Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Just for those four. Correct. For those Bailey four. Church or Lock. Yes. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, now back to Mass Avenue. Um, the 26 spaces from Mass Ave to carry, carry way to school of court. How do you want to? I'm ready to make a motion that may be controversial, here. but I'll do it. Um, that we uh, take, I move that we change the rules to un, essential, uh, unrestricted parking, essentially, because I think that's the only, to my knowledge, it's the only real category we have on the high school side of Mass Ave for that block and we enforce the signs on the opposite side of the road. Now, do you, do you want a sticker system or you first come first serve? Um, I'm pretty conflicted about a sticker system just because we have chosen so far in the past not to implement it because of the challenges that it has for our enforcement offices because we don't have meaningful enforcement or you know parking department or sticker system we do in a lot but we don't on the street and which is why we haven't done a lot of res on resident parking um, so I'm open to talking about that in a future like so basically what I'm I, one of the things I guess I'm trying to head towards in this meeting is saying yes we should allocate that part of Mass Ave towards helping high school parking um, and if we come back later and we talk about a different way of allocating that parking, uh, but my general goal is carve out that part to help the high school and continue to enforce on the rest. So now, would it? Yeah. So one sec. No, one sec. But, um, now, would it make sense? This might be for Doug. That if we just allocate those spots to the school, would it then be the school committee's purview to decide how it is used by? The, town, the employees at the school? My impression of that is that because that's a public way, I don't know that you can allocate spaces on a public way to the exclusive dedication of the, 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 school, the school because if I'm correct, the rest of the parking that we're talking about is either school-owned or school-leased property, correct? 
Well, right now we're talking about Mass Ave. No, no, I, I know, but all the rest of the parking that we're talking about in that area, I'm sorry, not in that area, in the lots and stuff like that, yes. that's, that mm -hmm. that's exclusively under control. I'm not sure that we could, um, absent a more complicated process, basically give that area up to the exclusive control of the school committee. Okay. So it would have to be a sticker system such yeah. that you know you'd say yeah, I mean, I, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. school use only the, the, with a sticker I, I would say I'm leaning towards <coughs> the sticker system for and I think it would be more like from 7 to 3 and that's because when we're talking about you know looking at more you know say alternative means of transportation like riding bikes like using the I think that using a sticker system will kind of set that in, set that in line so then people will know <coughs> they have a spot whereas in say I know what I would do is just try to be the first one there every day if I was driving and then if I didn't get a spot I'd say well what am I going to do I'd go park on a side street anyway so I think that if we did use some sort of sticker system it will help with stopping that overflow into the neighborhoods where we're already trying to remove parking from so that's kind of why I'd, I'd lean towards a sticker system. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I wonder, and this might be an issue, and God will help me here, I'm sure, but um, I think it's a good idea, and I think we need to do it tonight because we're now talking about striping this area, and clearly this is part of the area we're talking about, so there's going to need to be some signage. Why could we not designate, or can we uh, designate, the 26 spaces in front of the high school on Mass Avenue as stickers, sim uh, similar to how we do a resident-only sticker, but we, we turn those 26 stickers over to the superintendent of schools to determine how they are dispersed, the same as the principal at Arlington yeah. Catholic yeah. determines who gets the stickers for the lots. If, if you're talking about developing basically some kind of it's a traffic rule and order decision that the, or it's a decision of selectmen that this area is going to be used and you're going to post signage, you know, Arlington High School, you know, staff parking only from this hour to I this hour. Restricted parking. What's that? Or whatever, yeah. Restricted we'll, we'll parking. get the wording done. Okay. I mean, I, I think that we can work something out <laughs> where you have basically some kind of restricted parking. What I don't think we could do is basically some kind of, kind of deed the land, if you're just talking about how the administration of That's the sticker system. That's kind of what system. I was getting at earlier. Okay, I okay. I wasn't thinking yeah. we're just gonna give up yeah. the front of Mass Ave. Um, Do you have concern? But no offense, I don't feel it should go to the school committee, Bill. I believe it should go to the superintendent. She, she I think, is the most aware of, and whatever seniority system she'd use for who can get those spaces. Yeah, I, I think that they would know better than us. And that would take, less administrative time that basically our time is 26 stickers once yep. a year we give it to whomever superintendent. she he or she but now she keeps track of dan dunn steve burn number 26 that we do none of that yes um, the, the the big feature of this is that it'd be a little bit more specific and detailed than other restricted parking right it would basically be monday through friday only from only a, during the school year only during the school year i mean it's a detailed sign but you know, I think you could achieve that, yeah. Okay. Yes, Mr. Dunn. I really want to hear what Mr. Hainer has to say. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> First thank off, you, I'd Mr. like Chairman. to thank you all for that. Second off, I'd like to take the responsibility as chairman of the school to further investigate the back of the school to alleviate you. You've helped us a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. I just want to suggest um, a minor difference in what Mrs. Mohan just said that is we actually permit we don't care how many stickers there are. Well, it has to, well. See, this, uh, see, here's the thing. If you only say one sticker, one car, that leads to a lot of underutilization. Let's let the utilization be more flexible. And there's spaces and there's stickers. This is, and, and let's let uh, the school department fit that into their plans. Yeah. You want to say, do you want to put a cap on it, though? I don't want to say. Can I? Make a suggestion. I, I think that realistically speaking, if you if you designate the area, then the action of the selectmen, then you're really just talking about an administrative matter. Whether 
the superintendent gives out the stickers and how many stickers, unless you want it to be, may not be something that you have to decide here. If you're just saying, we're going to designate these spots, I we're going to put yeah, them okay, perfectly. Okay, now we're here. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But just give a vehicle for Officer Hurto and his staff so when they go up there, how are they going to identify Absolutely. what doesn't belong? That's it. Absolutely. That's it. Okay. And we can let the schools decide how they do exactly. that. Exactly. They're already producing the stickers for their lot just. Okay. okay, so what's the motion? Uh, the motion is to uh, create a special parking zone for the 26 spaces on Mass Ave in front of the high school as described and um, with the intention of permitting the superintendent to manage the usage of those in a way that uh, she and uh, the parking enforcement can, and the Marie can reach that's happy and that we enforce the uh, other side of Mass Ave as currently marked. Okay. Second with the friendly amendment? Absolutely. Can we change special to um, seasonal restricted or restricted? Uh, Just the short. word special. No. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, five nothing. Okay. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be quite on. Thank oh, you. Street My performance comments. application policy, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I recognize that the hour is late. Um, I, I appreciate putting this on, on the agenda. Um, you'll find in the packet um, a memo from Mr. Heim, and he may wish to uh, address this more um, directly. Uh, you recall that this body um, did take up um, kindly a, a bylaw change to uh, expand the definition of uh, public performance um, on the, the uh, public ways, um, expanding it from public music as it is currently uh, in the bylaws. Um, and uh, the uh, proposed bylaw change further um, specified that the Board of Selectmen uh, would um, promulgate appropriate procedures uh, and uh, regulations. Um, Mr. Heim notes uh, in his um, uh, memo that the uh, Attorney General has not yet um, passed off on the bylaw change that was um, adopted unanimously by town meeting. Uh, but after I, my understanding is you have consulted with the Attorney General's office and that they were not um, adverse to us moving forward uh, provisionally with these regulations, uh, especially considering that um, <clears throat> our current bylaw does permit public music with these with some procedures which um, we heretofore have not uh, adopted. The procedures, the proposed policy that you have in front of you um, is uh, substantially um, what was uh, distributed at the time that we had our hearings on the um, uh, street performance uh, bylaw uh, change. Uh, I think Mr. Heim has done a little bit more research with uh, a larger set of communities and uh, done some formatting cleanup uh, on this and um, uh, I think some minor minor changes, but uh, in essence, um, it uh, specifies uh, some definitions for the public performance that a permit is required um, and um, <clears throat> some reasonable restrictions about hours, uh, uh, use of amplification, compliance with our noise bylaws, um, keeping spaces you know on the public way away from uh, fire hydrants. Um, and such, and um, <clears throat> the intent is to make this a very simple process whereby somebody wishing to um, uh, obtain a, a permit could do this administratively, come to the office, fill out the application, um, and it would be a, an acknowledgement that they have received a copy of these rules so that if they were found to be in violation, then, then um, they could be held uh, accountable. And I think I've summarized it. Uh, yeah, Mr. Vice Chairman, if I could just emphasize a, a few points, uh, please. Of, of my own, I, I, I want to uh, just emphasize again. I think Mr. Kier as well covered covered this, but uh, I would not ordinarily suggest that you make too much movement on a bylaw uh, amendment that's currently pending before the Attorney General. They only have 90 days from submission. But in this particular case, not only did I uh, check with the Attorney General's office on this, because should it be adopted, obviously summer is kind of a prime season for. Uh, public performance, and it'd be nice for the Board of Selectmen to be able to take um, some positive actions. But we, because we have a public music uh, bylaw right now, for which we don't have a codified 
set of regulations or uh, sort of permit issuing practices, it's sort of prudent as well to be developing that. Um, and in this very limited circumstance, uh, the Attorney General's office uh, saw no issues with proceeding um, subject to the, uh, the uh, approval of the amended bylaws. So anything that you approved would, of course, not go into effect until um, the bylaws were amended because this references street performance. The other piece that I just wanted to emphasize again that's in the memo is that uh, what Mr. Cura drew up and what I uh, modified uh, was compared to other, uh, a variety of municipalities throughout the Commonwealth. And <coughs> the real, the, the critical sort of piece of this is not to be duplicative with the number of other restrictions, especially on noise that Arlington bylaws already contain, and uh, along with uh, noise amp amplification uh, systems. And to maintain a very content neutral approach to this so that we're not making judgments about the uh, artistic uh, nature of performances as much as we are about very um, uh, clear and neutral, simple criteria. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so for discussion, at least, I would like to move that we ad adopt the, um, the proposed uh, street performance uh, permit uh, policy and um, the draft application um, uh, can, uh, to take effect once the Attorney General has um, approved the bylaw that's, that's pending before. Do we have a motion? Before. Do we have a second? Second. second. Discussion? Yes, Mr. Dunn. Um, thank you both for your work. I have two changes that I'd like to propose. One, under 7D, sorry, yeah. Page three? Uh, page three. So it isn't 7D, it's just D, sorry. D1A, second bullet point, it says within 100 feet of a medical facility. I want to strike that. And the reason I want to strike that is because medical facility in my mind is undefined. Maybe it's somewhere else and I get it. Mm -hmm. But I think about, um, you know, a dentist office down uh, in Arlington Center. And uh, do I want us to be able to have street performance on Saturday near a dentist office? Yes, I do. So I want to strike. That I would propose we strike that. My second is um, on the next page, on page four, D, performance hours. I want to add a bullet point that says uh, something along the lines of um, exceptions for, will be granted for unusual or, um, hours on uh, event basis, specifically thinking about things like uh, first lights, uh, you know, the, 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 the holiday season celebration, thinking about some of the stuff that we do for New Year's Eve and like letting licenses be out later and stuff like that. Uh, I really like this board having the discretion to um, permit unusual things. Those are my two changes so that I'd like to make. Exceptions for special events approved by the board? Yep. That's what I'd be after. Okay. Further discussion? Um, yes. Uh, Ms. Mahan. Oh, okay. um, just um, through the chair to uh, Attorney Haim on page three, um, under B, uh, prohibition on locations causing undue interference. And I want to apologize <coughs> to my colleagues because I'm going to reference a conversation that um, just. If you think it's appropriate where we've been talking about the alcohol po possible revisions and where the issue came up with the one day permit, the language that was in there, mm -hmm. that um, the exact verbiage that cited wh who had the authority to be the enforcement agent mm -hmm. officer, um, because it was ambiguous for the one day um, alcohol license is a town hall and somebody challenged it. Okay. I know that town council and Officer Rateau, basically somebody challenged it and it was determined that the way the language was written because it was so open-ended that patrolmen, only Arlington rank and file could be. So if you didn't have an Arlington lieutenant captain or whomever there. So my thing would be to Attorney Heim, if you think whatever language we're gonna propose and possibly um, approve the full board to remedy that situation one day, should we mirror that phrase in, in there also. Okay, where you see police officer? Correct. Okay. 
just so, you know, and I'm not saying any street performer is going to challenge that, but, you know, where we've had it for people coming to Town Hall. And, and I apologize that I'm talking about a conversation that, you know, we haven't had yet. That's it. So that's not necessarily a change. I'm just putting that on town council's radar that if in the future he says yes, you should have the same language. Okay. Any further discussion? Mr. Greer. Uh, on page one, under definitions, I just want to be sure, but shall not, the, number one, A1, with a last uh, sentence after the comma, but shall not include presentations of audiovisual reproductions of such activities or the production of items for sale. So if, a, if there's a singer there who has a CD, he's not allowed to sell it or she's not allowed to sell it, is that what that means? No, we actually have, um, if you look on page five, number yes. three. All right, well then, but wait, before we go. What does that mean? So what does that mean then, if, if not that? I'll include presentations of audio. You're saying if somebody wants to come in and do a free um, camera shoot? They can't do that. Yeah, yeah I think what that means is you can't actually, as you're performing, yeah. be producing something to sell. Like you see in Harvard Square, they have the music playing, they're painting stuff, and then they're selling it. I right. think that's what that would be a prohibition against. Is that do I understand that? Right? Yeah. yeah. I, I, that's why do we want to prohibit that? That's a good question. I don't think we can discuss it. I I, I have to be quite honest. That's that that right. language was actually is is was pulled from another regulation, and and um, I didn't consider it very very. So do you careful. want to strike it? Well, well, I think there's a, there's a couple of issues that could come up. One is um, if you're um, there's a difference between someone performing uh, live and you know putting out a you know a music case or selling their CD and someone making an active sort of recording of their performance, whether by video or by recording and sort of using it more as like a, uh, a, a sort of venue, like a, a sort of recording studio, I guess is, is, is one analogy you might, you might make. And so I think that that's sort of what that's sort of getting at. And you could also be dealing with people who don't necessarily want to be, uh, especially if there's a visual component to it, people that don't necessarily want to be recorded I was say, but and be part of, you know, the live version of uh, mm -hmm. a busking event uh, in Arlington. So I think there's a, a, a couple. There's a couple of different things that, that that could sort of contemplate. I think if it's something that we find ambiguous, we shouldn't keep it in, though. You know, I, I have no problem striking yeah. that. So then that's what I'd recommend. Why don't we um, <coughs> water soluble media conducted live and in person? Why don't we just stop it right there? Put a period after conducted no live and in person, and strike the net, the rest of that. And let's see if we have something that we need to amend this at another point in time. Mm. So like if someone complains, then we might discuss if you're going to be recording live, you need to just like be right. recording the meeting. Okay. Mm. But, yeah. and then Joe, so somewhere they could sell a CD? Is that what yes, you're referring to? Yes, on page to? five, okay. it talks about selling, you know, the DVDs or CDs or cassettes. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't mention eight tracks, but that's <laughs> <laughs> I think cassettes is far enough, I think. But mine are only in eight tracks, Joe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm fine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I the only thing that really stuck out to me was on page five, um, section three of D is what type of displays shall not exceed twenty five square feet? are we talking about? Um, and that just seems Sorry, like a big display that would be allowing. Wait a minute, where's that? So in, see where section E is? Mm -hmm. the three lines up, notwithstanding the foregoing, a performer may set up a display on the public sidewalk, then skip down, assuming in public areas, other than sidewalks, no display shall exceed 25 square feet. So you could make that number smaller if you wanted. It's just. Well, I guess I'm, I'm just. Oh, sorry. if they're having a that? dance performance or something, they yeah. can't. They, so like a stage. Mm -hmm. uh, no. A rug is the answer. I think the display is the performance. Or cardboard, to be honest. For, no, it for shall be prohibited to place a rug. But to place a rug over grass. So you're saying, so if you put a rug down on pavement, it's okay. So is what I think we're okay, trying. So that's the 25 square feet that display that we're talking that's the way about. I read it yeah and you could make it you could make it smaller to reflect you know the, I guess 
I guess part of what I think Mr. Kuro is, is noting is that, you know, I, and I think it, I think one of the things that the selectors should keep in mind is that some of this will be dependent on what kind of street performance actually takes place in Arlington. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is a base to start from. It's probably going to have to be adjusted over time as you see what performance actually takes place. Uh, but if you had, you know, dance performance and stuff like that, you might want to limit the actual sort of staging area. You wouldn't want it to be, you know, taking over Uncle Sam Plaza per se. Yeah, I'm just like, no, that, I, that makes sense to me. I didn't know exactly what that was referring to. I'm new to the busking business. <laughs> and, I, and I wouldn't know that. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Ms. Kropelka, that the office has already received three or four requests around this. At least three nice. requests already around this, which is one reason we... we no, that, I'm happy that it's moving forward. Um, okay, so... We, um, so I'm happy to withdraw my motion and put it back out on the table with all of the recommended changes, which I think are actually... And that will encapsulate all the amendments? Encapsulate oh, all, everything that everyone has raised. Do we have a... Can yeah. we go over that really quickly? I'm sorry. I know what... It's page one. We're striking the, the last... Part of section A. A1. Of, yes. From but shall. That'll be stricken. Yes. And then the next change is on page three. three. We're striking within 100 feet of a medical facility at any time. Yep. Yep. On page four, we're adding a bullet point exceptions will be made for special events approved by the board. Yes. Yep. And then I will consider the uh, police officer language along with our discussion about the alcohol. Yep. Excellent. Do we have a second to that motion? Second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five nothing to vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. I know that was a lot of work. Thank you. Uh, moving on, Parmenter Building <coughs> Leases. Uh, we have the International School of Boston in the town of Arlington and Arlington Children's Center in the town of Arlington, uh, Douglas Heim. Move approval. So just just a quick a quick. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. <laughs> Go for it. Sorry, we don't, we don't have, uh, there's two things I want to note, is that the ACC lease is not complete yet. There's some minor things that we're still hashing out and everything will be just fine. But um, we only have the ISB one before us right now. And you'll notice a minor issue with respect to formatting when it was copied and sent to the selectman's office. The execution copies that I have here for you to sign tonight, if you approve it, are the page numbers match up correctly, but the page numbers for some reason when the formatting was done, when it was submitted to the board, don't match up. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion and a second, and this is only on the um, International School of Boston. Mm -hmm. so, um, Diane. So we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Doug. Um, oh, Nick. Oh, oh, yes. Sorry, Somebody, this is Doug on my thing. I'm sorry. Mr. Sorry. I missed what happened with the ACC. Um, Doug, going back, Doug, so you'll come back to us with the ACC? Yeah, my understanding is that there's a, a minor issue that we're working out with ACC. I don't expect it to be, you know, anything uh, of that's going to present a problem. I don't know if someone's here for right. ACC. Oh, come on up. I was, I'm actually a little surprised. I thought we had ironed that out, but apparently. Oh. So, my apologies. Okay. I, perhaps miscommunication from my attorney. Um, okay. My concern is that the lease is up June 30th at midnight. You guys aren't meeting again before that. So, in effect, when the, start, when the clock strikes midnight, or do we not have a lease? You have to move, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I, <will. laughs> I think it was. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No. Um, so the, uh, and I, I'm sorry, I, I thought um, Mike Bowden in our office had been communicating with you today that the uh, existing lease terms would re remain in effect, we'll collect under the existing lease, and then once the board adopts the new lease, we'd uh, adjust billing for the month and, and continue from there. All right. All right. So it will be on a future agenda then to be voted on? Oh, absolutely. Next, yeah. Yeah. Well, the next agenda sound good? July 28th? Yeah. yeah. Should be. Okay. All right. So don't go and pack up or anything. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. If, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, would it be appropriate to take a sense of the board vote? Just, uh, I'm sure that it's a little bit unsettling to not have the lease. That it is, the, uh, is it appropriate that once the, we anticipate that we will be able to sign the lease when it is in front of us? Is that, that a motion? I, I move that uh, it is the sense of the board that we will be approving the lease when it is in its final form. Second. We have a motion and a second and a vote of good faith. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, 
July 1st meeting? We only have a July 28th meeting. There's a special meeting. Oh, with the... Do it again afterwards. Uh, it's ready. You, you don't want to wait till the You're, 28th. Okay. It's up to you people. Yeah, if we can... Yeah. If it's ready. Can that be done in a week? It, it, may, it may. I think it there's, may a, there's, a, there's a strong chance that it will be. If if we'd have to put out a, a small separate notice, you know, I if I think that as long, I don't think that we have to do that. I think that we can just wait till the twenty eighth and say that we won't kick them out in the meantime. Is that okay? I'm comfortable with that. If you are fine with me. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So are we going to have? I I'd like to. Okay. I, I, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five, nothing. Thank you. Okay, next, um, not on the agenda, but on our desks, you will see an emer emergency addendum um, for a request for a one-day beer and wine license at the Homewood Suites. Um, and this, we really don't like to do this, but this couldn't be delayed. They thought... Um, uh, Louisa here thought that it was done by a coworker, and it was not done. And they have essentially a 40 to 60 person party taking place, and they don't have a one day bear and wine license. Um, Move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Do we have a second? Second. For any questions or anything? Then I, I agree with the chair, everything that you said. Um, we have done this before. Um, and with the understanding that, you know, one time, one shot, um, you know, yeah. you made a mistake, but we don't, we don't do it again. Yeah, I, excellent. Uh, did you second that? I don't. Joe, Joe did. Joe. Hi. Yes. Marie, have the, I, I'm sorry to remember, they've filled out uh, the forms before, they've done this before, they're familiar with it in general? Yes, they are, and they have the insurance and everything is on it, they've done it before. Unfortunately, their manager, Everyone thought the manager did it. The manager has left, and they just realized today when they were getting ready that. But I just want to make sure that they, in general, they know how the rules work and how the events go. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you, everyone. Next uh, discussion. Future Board of Selectmen. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, may, may I make a recommendation that we come back to that? If there's still people here, and I wonder, I'm assuming they're here for a correspondence received. Yeah, I think Do that's that completely first. appropriate. Um, we, thank you, Mr. Really. I don't know if they are. Yeah, I know. It's not that often we have people still in the crowd at this point in time. Um, but thank you for bearing with us. Um, Correspondence received. We have one from the ABCC for Kathmandu Spice Restaurant. Notice of suspension. Uh, Gene Pulley, Mass Ave Rebuild, uh, and the bicyclist. Um, Amy, oh, I'm going to mess this one up. Uh, Judah Walkus, uh, traffic safety issues on Wildwood Ave. Uh, Charles Grandin, uh, requesting crosswalk on Mystic Street. Jeff Boudreau, bike, bike path concerns. Molly Fluginger, uh, outdoor sidewalk dining. Lisa Kniff and Diane Gardner. A crosswalk request at intersection of Gray Street, Cliff Street, and Oakland Ave. Now, does anyone want to speak to any of those? Yes, please. <coughs> Have you enjoyed our meeting tonight? Yes, very much, thank you. <laughs> Um, I'm Amy Jadalkis. Uh, I sent the letter with regard to the traffic around Wildwood. And um, I just wanted to, um, and this is my neighbor, Chris Geyer. Chris Geyer, 56 Churchill. Right. And um, so we're at Butters in the area, and we've just noticed that there is a lot of traffic, especially now that Whole Foods is in the area. People are taking Wildwood as a cut through from um, Highland to shoot down Wildwood to get to uh, Bartlett to um, get to Whole Foods. And also that we have two bus stops in that area for the Bishop School. There's probably 15 kids that are at the two bus stops. And a number of kids and families are going, walking in that neighborhood and bicycling through that neighborhood every day and on the weekends as well. 
And we've just been noticing a lot of near accidents. Um, scarily, a lot of times when we are at the bus stop <laughs> with our kids or waiting for our kids. And um, it, it seems to be getting worse. And I think that it's a straight shot down Wildwood. It's kind of a downhill from Highland. It seems like cars are picking up speed. And also, we have all the cars that are parking from the high school along there. And cars are not slowing down, even <coughs> though it's tight. Um, so I spoke to the town, to the um, police department, and they said, well, the cars are probably going at the legal speed, but my contention is that legal does not necessarily mean safe. So I think the area might need to be uh, looked at with regard to safety mediation in that area, where, whether it's um, a crosswalk or some kind of um, stanchion with a crosswalk so that people can see that there are a lot of pedestrians in the area and also take into consideration some of the areas where the sight lines are really bad for people who are crossing Wildwood from Ch uh, Churchill in both directions. The, um, the stop lines are quite far back. There's a very overgrown tree and some bushes on one side and people just cruise into the intersection right into the oncoming bus <laughs> sometimes. Um, and also I wanted to point out that the timing of the letter is a little bit unfortunate because it is the end of the school year. So any traffic studies might not be appropriate right now, but we would love to hear what the next steps would be and um, any other information that you need from us and what um, we can do to help out to kind of get a process moving to look at the safety in the area. Chris, do you want to add anything? Oh, I would just add that uh, that area is particularly uh, challenging. Uh, the sight lines are such that um, you basically have to move up 15 feet beyond the, the stop line to uh, be able to see oncoming traffic. So anything that could be done to uh, address that would be great. Right. And also I want to point out that there's a lot of junior drivers in the area. There's a lot of um, uh, student driver cars that practice three-point turns around there and, and a lot of students that are probably parking in there, although the um, enforced parking rules might change that. But um, <laughs> So there's a lot going on on our street in the area. Thank you. Mr. Greeley. Well, it, it's right about this time of year we always get uh, a request similar to this, but especially about that hedging on that island. It, it blocks three different oh, the hedge corners of right. that island. Yeah. And I'm wondering whether we should take them out. I mean, it just every year they grow and every year they block people being, you know, driving and being able to see. This uh, is at Lachland and that, that, wild that wood triangle. That goes, that wild yes, wood that's goes the triangle. Right and then, then, yeah. then the next intersection down is, um, well, there's Bailey and then there's Churchill. And that also, it's a private hedge there. Oh, but there's right. a town tree that has a lot of growth out into the street as well there. so. But at least I would ask through the chairman to the manager that we cut those hedges down. If we don't take them out, at least cut them down a bit again. But every year they keep growing back up and they block the, at least that triangular island right. there, they block uh, people from, my bank is at TD Bank at the right. bottom of the hill. Yeah. So I'm sure I'm not one of the ones that was speeding down there to get, <laughs> get to that. But otherwise, and as, as she states, I mean it is, Schools now out. Is this something we prefer to attack regarding the rest of the issues or not? I, I do think this would be appropriate for attack, but do you want to maybe yeah. put a disclaimer saying not potentially sure. put a hold on it? Yeah. And attack so the Transportation rush. Advisory Committee, and right. they really do study. Mm -hmm. They'll do all sorts of pedestrian and all sorts mm -hmm. of studies. Right. Uh, and it will be tougher because it is the summer, but I'm mm -hmm. sure they can at least... Uh, and you know, they have summer plans as well, I'm sure, yeah. so they might be happy to see that. So I, I move that we refer the, the hedging issue and the tree issue to at least be looked at mm -hmm. to the manager and that the, um, we also refer this matter to, to uh, TAC and ask for them for a report back by the end of the summer. No, not by the end of the no. summer. Right? The the summer. That we refer to them and say, please, start a business starting in September, consider placement of this on your upcoming agenda. Something to that effect. Because we want them to be able to see. see yeah, the well, I understand, but I, I, I feel they could go down to this neighborhood now and take a look at the physical conditions. I, I know we gotta wait till September to oh. see when the kid, besides which, I don't know if you heard us tonight, we're talking about we really will be enforcing the two hour parking. Yeah, we uh, appreciate in that. In all those areas yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, 
So let's refer to TAC and let's leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. sounds good. Yeah. Do we have a second? Second. second. And if I could, it's just memory from even before I was a selectman, so I could be incorrect. The hedges on Lachlan Ave, um, if they are removed, that's fine. But I had a memory that the neighbors way back when, because perhaps it's sort of a box or something there. Do you know what, is, is there something there? The neighbors requested that the town do something. Is, yeah. So maybe in that area, I just want to leave that on your plate, that the reason that was put in was so. But if you want to take them out, that's fine. But it was in response to the neighborhood saying, can you pretty that up a little? I'll have to jog my memory, but I know I've had a conversation that explained to me why they could not be removed. Yes, but trimming them is certainly something sure, we can yeah. look at. Okay. Perhaps after the meeting tonight, you can go and remove it yourself, Adam. <laughs> thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you. I have hedge trimmers. <laughs> Just leave them there. He'll pick them up. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate right, it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second on sending traffic safety issue issues in the Wildwood Ave <coughs> neighborhood to tech. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Opposed. No. Okay. Five nothing vote. Did someone say no? Someone no. Oh. No, everyone agreed. Um, Charles, please come up. This is Charles Grandin from the Winchester Country Club requesting a crosswalk. Charles Grandin, a manager of Winchester Country Club, also a 94 old mystic resident. Um, the club has parking issues like you've heard tonight with Arlington High School. And we've come up with a creative way in the summer to work with the Armenian Cultural Foundation to lease their parking of 24 spots for June, July, and August. Our staff is having difficulty par uh, crossing Mystic Street, just the traffic flow is incredible. And what we're asking for is a crosswalk, and we'd be willing to supply the signage and in the middle of the street and pay for that if the town would approve a, a crosswalk there at the, at the end of Mystic Street by the new bus stop that they move towards our property to help our staff get across the street safely. Hey, um would this be a state issue? Yeah. Because so we couldn't approve this. Is that correct? Um, I, I it very well may be, and I know a similar request came in a little bit further up Mystic Street, and TAC was opposed, and I know the police department was opposed based on the speed of vehicles um, and, and a danger that it would would cause. I think we could, at, at a minimum, before going to TAC, we could refer this to APD to take a look, check the jurisdiction, uh, and give an opinion of whether or not it would be safe to actually put in a crosswalk. Does that sound good? Yeah, that'd be great because then we then we would know to go to somewhere along that line. Yes. Keep Excellent. Going. Okay. Thank you, Charles. Thank Sorry you. Sorry to have a situation. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. I did. Did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll be back next meeting, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So do we have a motion for Otherwise the move receipt? Can I, can I point out uh, one matter yeah, on uh, the last item from uh, Lisa Kniff yeah. and uh, Diane Gardner? So I put on the board's uh, uh, desks tonight uh, a sheet labeled uh, draft, and you see some green markings. Uh, so <coughs> simply by chance, uh, this has been something that's been in the works for quite some time at the intersection uh, that is noted in this email. So this is the intersection of Oakland, Gray, and Cliff Street. Uh, Neighbors in that area uh, have expressed concerns over the past couple years. TAC studied this, made recommendations in a sketch to uh, the engineering division. The engineering division uh, put together the plan that you have before you, uh, which will create uh, crosswalks in the area as well as um, create some sidewalk bump outs and change the uh, intersection geometry to try to make it safer for pedestrians. And in fact, uh, barring any weather related um, uh, you know, uh, holdups or delays, uh, what you have before you will probably uh, have ground broken the next three to four weeks. So I will, um, after tonight's meeting, I will send this to um, the two residents who sent the email to the board uh, with a brief explanation of what I'm explaining to the board tonight. Thank you. Welcome. And, and yes. Could I just, where I'm, I'm referenced in um, the, I think where we're all titled, but I'm specifically referenced in the correspondence from Barnum Street. Um, if my colleagues could indulge me, could I just ask that we refer this to ABAC with um, the understanding that if they should have any comments on her f first five um, bullet points, but they're not required to, just so I can take some sort of action on this issue. Yeah, I'm fine with that. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of you know what it is I'm 
respectful he's supposed to do with this. So, I mean, the bottom half, I mean, the Mass Ave corridor projects is in and it's happening and, you know. I think we all got our own version. Yeah, we did. Did you? Oh, yeah, you all did. got that? Okay, well then, what do you, I, I thought it was just to me. If people don't want to do that, I just figured, just send it, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, okay, where I saw everything in there. All right, you, um, you know what, then, actually, let me wait on that request. Only be, the only reason I was considering something, um, I do want to talk to a member or two of ABAC, because I have heard from various people one or two of the points that are in there, and I wanted to talk to them about what to proceed on when. So why don't we wait on that? Thank you. I apologize. I thought it was just... Yeah. Well, and, of course, a continuing misconception that the majority of people are opposed to this project just on that simple vote about three or four lanes. Uh, and the, uh, something recent, recently I read that um, there's much less chance of a bicyclist being hit, on a, being hit by a car on the bike path than on Mass Avenue. Well, since there are no cars on the bike path, <laughs> I think there's very little chance they're going to be hit by a car on the bike path. Sure. But we need to continue to encourage multimodal uh, methods, walking, uh, public transportation, carpooling, and biking. Um, so I don't know, I, shut up, Kevin, I just, don't get you wind me up. Okay, so we, So we, we'll um, proceed on the rest of it, right? Yes, do we have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Yes. Aye. 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 For Lisa Panep and Diane Gardner, what did you want to refer that to? Uh, Adam said he was gonna send a letter out to them. Can you, you can, I received as a fine action for the board. Okay. Uh, and then, but I'll take care of it. Sounds good. So, did we take a vote on that? All those, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank but you. just on that clarification, a crosswalk is going in. That's all right. Oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah. I, I think they're going to get their wishes yeah. and more. Uh, they asked for one crosswalk. There's going to be three. Oh, there's going to be three? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's going it's to raise the bar for quick response for them. <laughs> um, okay, back to 18, future Board of Selectmen's meetings. Thank you. Okay, uh, so. Mr. Chair, if I may, through you. Marie, which would be the worst day for you? Eight, Monday the 8th before the state primary or no, Monday the 15th after town day? Huh? Monday the 15th. Would be the worst. Yeah. Okay. So how about 8 and 22 in September? That works for me. Or did we want one the night of Charlie's dedication? Uh, Marie? We decided we would not have it so that we can start at 5.30 to 8 o'clock. That people can open. Charlie. All right. Does the 8th so eight and, and the 22nd of September work for everyone? That's great. I believe so. Yeah. Looking at October. Six and twenty, or yeah, that, that also. Uh, Yom Kippur does that extend through Monday? No, it's sorry, sunrise to sunset. I think it's just that. Okay, so six and twenty. Oh, sunset to sunset. <coughs> six and one second, Kevin. I'm just pulling this up. So it's six and twenty. Yeah. Instead of the 20th, would you mind doing the 27th? Six and 27th? Which are it's fine by me. It's fine. So we'll okay. Yep, we're good by me. Thank you. Six and 26. <clears throat> so do we do 10 and 24 then in November since we'll be... Well, is the 10th the... Um, the night before Veterans no, Day? No, we don't do Monday holiday. Yeah, but I don't mind the third the night before the um, state election unless Right, but we're meeting the week before. The week before. Yeah. Okay. He, Stephen asked for the 27th instead of the 20th. Mm -hmm. So we can, I don't care if you want. You are saying Veterans Day is Tuesday the 11th, so we're open on Monday. So yes. 10 and 24. Yes, that's fine. That's recommended. Eight 
22? Yeah, that's fine. Um, or no? No, I, I, I think I'd prefer if the 8 and I don't think the, 20, the 20 second won't work for me. Perhaps. 15th does not work for me. Okay. We're running into the same problem, yeah. So the 31st one would be the worst. Want to agree on the eighth, and then work it out as we get closer. That might—I think that could and, potentially and possibly work. maybe do a Wednesday meeting or whatever. Yeah. I mean, we work can it figure out something future. out. I mean, we have Definitely plenty of time between. Well, now traditionally in December we do one full meeting and then we do one short meeting. Celebration for the Chris and the chairman oh, yes. has the. Uh, You're right. Too. Okay, so the, yeah, the, a short meeting, the 22nd perhaps, and then we'll go, that would be the Christmas party. I thought you said the 22nd didn't work. Um, we'll make it work. A, a short one will. Yeah. Okay, that is Christmas week, so. It is. Well, so right. be good, because Santa's gonna be coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay, and now, um, actually before we get to new business, um, I had a question for Adam Kurowski. Um, how do you want feedback from us, and if so, what's the best way to get it for you? Yes, um, I'd love to get some feedback. Uh, would you mind coming up to the microphone? Sure. Thanks. I would love feedback to see what uh, what your experience was like, uh, as well as um, for Doug and Adam Chapdelaine uh, to really understand if what the transition would be like if we went with this product. Uh, and I guess email is fine. Uh, I could come to another meeting um, or have phone conversations with you individually if that's preferable. Okay, so kind of open-ended, but perhaps moving forward within the next, say, two weeks, um, if you, anyone has questions or concerns or wants to chat, they can get in touch with you directly. Is that okay? Adam, is that okay with you? Uh, for this process, that's, um, I think that's a good idea. I'm fine with that. Okay. Well, can I, should be, are we still meeting Saturday morning? Yes. Uh, yes, yeah. I'm going to have trouble sleeping for the rest of the week. <laughs> Could this be a topic of discussion then on Saturday morning? Isn't that part of your, do we make this part of your goals? Uh, uh, it, it's part of the Adam selection goals. Adam won't be there on Saturday well, morning. I was about to recommend that he be there. If we're oh, so you, how you excited do like he got! Yeah. Visual well, punishment. I mean, I really want to talk about it. I think it's fantastic. I think it, you know, I think you've done spectacular work here. Thank you. But how much did that take? And I want Marianne and Marie exactly to yeah. be involved with these discussions as well. So just to say to do it by email doesn't. Well, I think that if every so you want to have like a bigger group discussion as opposed to everyone send their own comments. I'd like Marianne and Jean and Marie to be no, part of these. Well, I mean, but just sending an email to Adam isn't including them. No, but they, they are far more included than we are at this, and they have been working you know, regularly. I think that every concern that our office has, they have relayed several times over already. Um, but if you're right, looking okay. to make it an nope. agenda item, say, at the next one, I'd like to talk about it. That's all I'm saying. So yeah, yeah. If we don't set an agenda item. That's fine with me. I'll, I don't do emails, but yeah. Yeah. Why can't we discuss it on Saturday? Yeah. So I, I think it's fine to have a brief discussion Saturday, but I wouldn't want it to sidetrack from the discussion of all the goals. And I think it deserves more than a brief sort of touch. I, I mean, for the board to be comfortable with it. I have to disclose that I've been using it, so hmm. I have at least. 11, 12 clouds there with comments. Oh, yes. I, I, but I'll talk to you about that to that on purpose. Yeah. But let's not discuss it now. We'll discuss it when the chair says on Saturday or whatever. Mm. Eventually, we do have to come to a decision either to bypass this and go and look for another product, uh, purchase this, or discontinue the project altogether. But now, when does that have to happen? By? Well, we originally set a implementation date of the end of August which would mean a purchase would have to occur in July in order to be properly trained by that point. And our next meeting is until the end of July, so that is a problem. Um, that won't work for a larger discussion at a meeting. Um, does 
Does anyone else have any ideas? Mm. I, <coughs> Well, I mean, why, why don't we make sure we carve out a few minutes on Saturday morning since the board will be together yeah. before a decision has to be made. But if any individual board member has the opportunity to send an email to Adam with feedback, that'd be great. And if email is not an option, if you want to call Adam or even have coffee with Adam to, to make sure your concerns are expressed so he uh, can try to either explain, you know, how it can be resolved or not, um, why don't we try to do that? That, I that think fair? that's... That works for me. Everyone else? Good. Uh, I guess um, I've been trying to say, I agree. So I'm probably just going to say whatever Marianne and Marie and Fran say. So in some ways, I'm not sure that I'm even necessarily going to have a strong opinion on this. I'm probably just going to accept their recommendation. But I, th I think like even just for like how you feel about like certain Oh, I will absolutely be emailing Adam. Oh, Don't that, worry about that. That's what I think that we're <laughs> Oh, okay. That yeah. You're going to yeah. be getting all No, no, I'm just thinking about the in terms of like actually making a decision. Oh, I'm I'm there. completely Okay. I agree. But, but I, yes, I have notes. He will get them. Yeah, that's okay. So you'll be hearing from us one way or another. If we do choose to purchase the product, there is a, a period where we need to work together in order to develop it in the way that yep. you guys see fit. And so that's where the comments will come in handy, and that's where you'll see the changes happen in, in the application. Could I just ask two quick questions now yeah, while please. Adam's here? So how much preparation does this take, and I guess Mary Ann's and Marie are the better one to answer this, to get us to where we were tonight? Because to me, this worked really well. Oh, great. That's good to hear. Uh, but uh, everything oh, was done for me. It was a lot of work. It was well, a lot. That's a, was a and lot is that what it's going to be required every week to, uh, for an agenda? More than any other agenda has ever been. It's always to be well, I understand. This is the first time we're using it and setting it up. I'm hoping that I'd, I'd like to add a caveat to that, though. We were, we were learning. I was learning the system at the same time. I was training them to learn the system. Right. So I, I'm confident that down the, low, that down the line it's going to take less time. Right. But to juggle the development of the agenda, the traditional way, and this, it was kind of hard to separate how much time it actually took. Right. But. I mean, you're like me. I like the papers in front of me, right? But if, if, if we go to this is the primary way and I'm emailed this package before the meeting, I assume these iPads stay here uh, on the desk. Maybe uh, not that exact one, but... Right, yeah. right, but, it, the, I, but uh, it's not like we're taking it home back and forth, but this whole thing could have been emailed to me. Yes. Right? Yep. Was, was the entire agenda already emailed? Uh, we could go through it at our access. To, access to the agenda was emailed, so that right. as soon as you sat down at your computer at home, yeah, you could log so, in. But in terms of hard copy, it would just be I could... All right, we're getting into, exactly. I don't want to go into too much of that discussion. But one more, do you have to be here each night? I Does someone have to be here like you were tonight? You can, we can do what I did tonight after the meeting as long as someone takes notes during the meeting. Okay. The uh, automatic voting has to be triggered yeah. in, in session. I'd eliminate that. I don't, I don't. I didn't, yeah. yeah. I, well, I, didn't I don't think to, we'll nip it It wasn't it now, on my screen half the time. Yeah. There was some times when it didn't trigger it because the vote happened too fast. So right. I just I listened but to I don't the think we need votes right and now. put it in. We move fast Sorry. up here. <laughs> we don't need <laughs> the click on the th Adam, up. thank you very much. Uh, Adam, uh, great work though. Thank you. Thank you. Could I just clarify? Do you want me at the meeting on Saturday? Mm, no. I, I don't think we'll. It, we won't talk about it long enough to make. No, it. no but we. Appre I appreciate you offering. Thanks. Thank you. Um, okay. New business, Adam. New, any new business you'd like to report? <laughs> <laughs> no. Marie. No, I just want to remind you about the vet on the July 3rd that they're going to honor the veteran. Yeah. And I think, and I hate to say it, I don't have it in front of me, but I think it is it 10 o'clock in the morning. 10 o'clock in the morning. 10 o'clock in the morning, and it's going to be um, upstairs and outside, so, which should be very nice, right? That should be very nice, nice. yes. If you can attend. Thank but you. I'll remind you before that. Is that it? That's it for me. Thank you. Doug. I'll be providing you with a more detailed memo in advance of the uh, joint body meeting. Thank you. Adam. Uh, just a few brief things. Uh, some of you may know this already, but I wanted to let the board know that uh, the management analyst in the town manager's office, Mike Bowden, 
has accepted a position in Indianapolis, so he will be leaving us. Uh, it, it's a big loss. Uh, as you know, he was a, a piece of the brain behind Arlington Visual Budget and a lot of uh, the other great things we've done over the past couple of years. So he, he total will have been with us for about a year and a half, uh, but both a good uh, job opportunity and an opportunity to be closer to uh, family. Uh, he, it's going to be working in the city county budget office for Indianapolis, so big place, different place. So we'll be sad to see him go. Um, I wanted to let the board know that. Uh, also, to build on what Marie said, uh, at that event next Thursday morning to dedicate the Veterans Resource Center, I was told today that the state's Secretary of Veterans Services, Coleman Nee, plans to be in attendance. Uh, so that would be a nice, uh, nice addition to the ceremony. Uh, and finally, um, <clears throat> in regards to the goal setting session, I did provide the board a memo with a packet of information in preparation for that and also emailed the document earlier today, uh, getting ready for Saturday morning. So Thank you. that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Greeley. Absolutely nothing. Ms. Mahan. Um, just want to um, make sure that we're on track since we're having the novice agenda tonight that it's my understanding through the chair to the town manager that come July the selectman's office will have Wi-Fi connection? Come July we'll start installations. I don't think it'll be live in, in July. All right, and this is just my ongoing that I feel like the second sister to the school side. Also with that, um, I think we discussed and agreed about similar to what happened here tonight with the Art Lounge um, how presentation, um, looking into similar to what the school committee has where they have um, a screen and a feed already set in, um, possibly on that side of the room so that um, it would stop the need for you all to have having to move. Um, just basically having the same amenities and features that um, we have on the school side. And then the last thing is I see the letter to, um, in our manila envelope packet to Commissioner Murray regarding the DCR project down Mystic Valley Parkway. Um, if for some reason you receive a response from him, um, as you know, we still have the sunny side issue. I am embarrassingly going to contact the governor's office tomorrow. Um, on Sunnyside because we had agreement two years ago. We had an email agreement in January. The manager has made a, a ridiculous amount of attempts. I, I, I'm only doing it because I've been given permission by the manager to do that. But I, it is going to be embarrassing to contact the governor of Massachusetts on this. But I don't know what else to do. It's, it's just not happening. Just wanted to let my colleagues know. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. Nothing. Joe. Nothing to report. Okay, um, me, uh, I went, we went to, Marie and I had dinner on Friday night um, for the ACMI Awards. It was uh, lovely as usual, and um, we're very grateful for everything ACMI does for the town. And, um, yeah, they're, they're really great. And other than that, um, no new business. Move to adjourn. Second. Do all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed.